fans, we are live. Some breaking news. Sam Kerr is joining Chelsea on a two and a half year deal. Wow, that's what it's all about. at his own schedule to see upcoming fights or catch up on recent events. Never miss a punch by setting reminders that alert you on your mobile device. I am here with the main event, Jay Swingler. How are you feeling? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. where he catches this and look at his body position and he has to pull that back around under his feet. Navigate fight night key moments. Replay the rounds of the action you want to see again and again. To the water for the final time. He's won the race to go along with a championship. Absolutely magnificent. What a strike that is. The following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this room, Hello and welcome to the Free Arena in Dublin as we build up towards the rematch between Chantel Cameron and Katie Taylor. An incredible matchup, an incredible rematch, November 25th. Dublin, Ireland! The undisputed lightweight world championship. I know that I've got a massive job on my hands and yeah, I'm definitely coming out more aggressive and try and win in better fashion. Hey! Guys' reaction is built into my mindset, it's in my DNA. I have a chance to become a 2 weight on the Swedish champion. This is the biggest fight of my career so far. I'm dangerous for Katie Taylor right now. I am very, very confident that I'll be victorious in a fight night. Be described as the rematch of the year. This is about me. Just going in there to do what I do best. That is tonight's main event and what a main event it is. But first up, we've got four fantastic fights on before the bell tonight. Zelfa Barrett looks to show his class against tough Spanish-based Romanian Costan Ion. Emmett Brennan hopes to impress the home support against Nimrick's Jamie Morrissey. John Cooney against Liam Gaynor in an all-Irish contest. But first, Giorgio Vizioli in his professional debut against Lee Sibley. Well, the 
fighters are ready for the first contest. So let's hand over to our MC for the evening, Mr. David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Three Arena here in Dublin, Ireland. We are live on the zone for a big night of World Championship Professional Boxing. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stagefront, C4 Energy Drink, and Forged Irish Stout and Everlast. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the Boxing Union of Ireland, the president is Brian McKeever. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell from Ireland, scoring referee Emil Teat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the super featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the white and red with blue trim. He scaled nine stones, seven pounds, five ounces. His professional record, three victories against one defeat. He has one win coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Coralejo, Islas Canaria, España, Lee Anthony Sibley. Sibley. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the green with the gold trim. He scaled nine stone, eight pounds, and nine ounces. Tonight, he makes his much-anticipated professional debut, fighting out of Aldershot, Hampshire, England, introducing Giorgio Vizioli. Vizioli. Gentlemen, you're both professionals. Conduct yourselves as professionals at all points. I caution you now, listen to my commands and obey my commands at all points. Touch them up, let's go to work. Well, here we go. First round of our first contest here on Before the Belt. In the blue corner, the debutant, Giorgio Fizioli, two weight, two time ABA champion from the famous Repton, represented the club, the green and gold colours with pride. And his opponent in the red corner, Lee Sibley, Lutzen based, but now living in Spain, immediately, he's on the back foot, Barry. Yeah, but that's because Vizioli's come out at the centre of that ring. Nice wide stance. You can see him just putting pressure with that front right foot. Just not allowing Sibley any sort of a opening here to attack. Just put him straight on the defensive with that nice solid, solid full jab there. Yeah, beautiful jab from Vizioli. And I'm pleased to say we are joined by a super flyweight 6 and 0 contender, Shannon Ryan. How are you, Shannon? I'm very well. I'm very well. I can see here that Sibley is. Um, Obviously orthodox and Giorgio is southpaw, but it's fighting. Oh, for lovely left hand from Vizioli. Walks onto the shot, Sibley. What a shot that was from the former Repton man. Oh, the referee waves it off. What a debut, what a shot from Giorgio Vizioli. Fantastic debut, like I say. Barry, what a wow. shot. You go. Every show we do, you get Eddie Hearn banging on about these youngsters. They, you know, they gotta. You know, this is the platform. You gotta make people remember who you are. Well, a left hand like that remembers. You know, you're gonna remember Vizioli with a left hand like that. And it wasn't so much the left hand. He took a little lean back, if anything, a step back with the back foot, just to create space. So Sibley was gonna throw a shot. He took a little step back, just create the space to throw that left hand right through the gap. It was a beautiful shot there. Sandy. No, I, I thought that was perfect timing. As I was saying before, the foot was on the. He's trying to get the foot on the outside. And he was trying to get that. Giorgio caught him with a shot, and it was perfect timing. I must say, Shannon, you, you spotted that straight away, the front foot, and that led to that beautiful shot. What a shot it was. We're going to see here now, just a touch with the jam, touch with the jam. Just look at that, though. See the little step back there? As Sibley comes forward, we just need a little, little lean back on a step back. Just creates the space there, get all that leverage into the shot. It's a real beautiful, calm, really thought out movement there. 
That's beautiful. just fantastic, isn't it? That, that is beautiful. He's made Sibley come over the front foot, so he's off balance when he catches him. It's fantastic. But for a young man in his debut, the composure he showed there was absolutely first class. That is how you make a statement. Well done, Giorgio Vizioli. Fantastic shot. Look at that on the point. He, I must say, he done well, Sibley, getting to his feet. He was unsteady, though, and the referee done exactly the right thing. But you can see what it meant to the young man there. That is how you entertain. That is how you make a debut. Hey, timekeeper. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Emil T calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 21 seconds of round number one, declaring your winner by TKO. He's now undefeated as a professional. Giorgio Vizioli. Yes, so the man from Guildford, Surrey. Young man, should I say, the debutant off on an absolute flyer. Fantastic left hand that was well timed. The well scored. I mean, I didn't get it to get into his background. He's a great lad. He, he made some real sacrifices. Now trained with Mike Tibbs, you can see to his left. Fantastic coach, Steve Waters, Repton coach, the famous Repton and He's got a great team behind him, Giorgio's a lot of talent, a lot of natural flair and confidence will be absolutely through the roof with a debut like that. He'll go on to, to his next fight as soon as possible, I'm sure he's got a great team behind him. He is now making his way to our reporter for the evening, Jamie Ward, who is ringside along with promoter Eddie Hearn. Let's hear from the winner right now, Giorgio Vizio. Giorgio. Congratulations, you only get one professional debut. To win yours like that, in that fashion, on the big stage here tonight, just give us your immediate reaction and tell us how you're feeling right now. You know what, I've never actually ever stopped someone before. It's the best feeling uh, in the world. And you know what, everyone thought I couldn't bang when I was turning pro. Everyone thinks I was just a boxer mover. But there you go, I can bang when you put the eight-ounce gloves on. Just talk us through the finish. Beautifully timed left hand out of that southpaw stance. What a way to win. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. I was just trying to go in there first round, just see how he was, and all of a sudden just come out of the blue, and it just, there we go. I think we often say, will fighters be suited to the pro ranks? You just said there you've never stopped someone before. I think it's safe to say you feel at home in a professional boxing ring? Yeah, 100%, and um, there's more to come, 100%. Were there any nerves at all, Giorgio? Because all week you've seemed so relaxed, you've had a big smile on your face. How were you truly feeling heading into the ring tonight? The whole week I was more nervous for the press conference, I'm not going to lie. But um, no, um, yeah, no, I had a little nerves uh, coming up when I was hitting the pads. But no, I was quite relaxed for the whole week, and um, yeah, I'm really pleased. Let's bring in uh, trainer Mark Tibbs. Mark, I know for you to... Bring in a young fighter to the gym. There's got to be a few boxes they tick. They've got to be coachable, have a good attitude, and most of all, have potential and talent. What excites you after watching that tonight about the journey working with Giorgio? Well, I, I never doubted he could pull that off like that. Uh, he was a decent opponent, winning record, but he has, uh, Giorgio has great timing. He can see, he knows what they're going to do before they do, if you know what I mean. He reads the fight very, very well. Good fighter. Good boxer, beautiful boxer. I didn't see it tonight, but I said as soon as he come into the gym, he can punch too. But listen, let's not get too excited because his boxing ability is going to take him into the later rounds and turn him into a championship fire, you know, when these guys says he's ready. Well, let's grab a word with promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, we always keep talking, and you yourself in particular, about these young fighters impressing when they get the opportunity. What do you like about what you've just seen of Giorgio Vizioli? Well, a first round knockout, you know, you, you can't really beat it, to be honest with you. And, you know, like you said, talking about the transition to the pro style, timing is, is so important when you've got great feet and, and you've got the skills of, of Giorgio Vizioli. And I think that that's going to take him a long way in the sport. You don't just have to be a big bruiser that can walk people down and whack. Timing is going to be his key. He's shown now already that he's a big puncher. That opponent was three and one. You know, it was a, a stern test for the professional debut. And a lot to get excited about. You know, for me, my job now is to go out and yap away and talk about Giorgio. These guys know it's very, very early days. Yeah. It's about consistency. It's about activity. You know, obviously, that's really coming up to December now. So he'll be out probably first show of 2024. And then you want five, six, seven fights next year in the UK, around the world. Quality fighters like this will move to six rounds quite quickly. But... Again, let's not get carried away. It's a wonderful professional debut. A showreel knockout that gets played virally you know, around the world, and that's important. Great start. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Massive star. You know, what a journey ahead. 
Giorgio, final one from you. What excites you most, listening to Mark and, and Eddie there? What excites you most heading into 2024? Just get, for me, it's just getting activity, and that's all I want, really, is just learn my craft and um, get the wins and, uh, yeah, not, not get rushed, but um, slowly mature. Are you excited to get backstage and watch that one back? 100%. I see what the Twitter's saying as well. But I, also, I want to say a thank you to uh, my team, Eddie, and my manager, my family for coming out as well, and uh, all my sponsors as well. They know who they are. Great stuff. Giorgio Vizioli, welcome to the professional game. That's how you do it. Well done. What a shot that was. And um, no doubt, Barry, he will watch that. I would say triple figures. I'm saying a thousand of times. Yeah, when someone's having a day, you forget about whatever they did as an, as an amateur. There's pressure when you, in your first fight. You want to impress. And quite often, I always say it, the, the eagerness to, to impress makes you rush your work a little bit. You, your composure is not quite there. But he looked composed from the offset. He took the centre of the ring. He, he used that front foot as a pressure weapon to keep Sibley at bay all the time so he couldn't set up any sort of attacks. And then when Sibley did commit to an attack, he had enough, he had enough of arm there to stay nice and calm, take a little lean back, allow Sibley to come over that front foot and then land with that lovely long left hand right through the centre of the guard. Ready. And, and as Sandy was saying, you know, without getting that foot in the right place, first of all, that shot's not, not, not available for him. Shannon. Shannon. Sorry, <laughs> Shannon. Shannon. Sorry, we'll, sorry we'll, Shannon. We'll head over to you now. What a debut. D does it get any better than that? No, do you know what? I thought that was excellent. He was calm, calling, collected. It's his debut. It's his first professional fight. He had great timing. He didn't rush. You know, you see a lot of people that do rush their work because of the occasion and he took his time and he got a brilliant knockout. And now moving forward, he's going to be oozing with confidence. Like I said, he wants to be active. Um, he is young, but I think he's got a bright future ahead. Talking of confidence, yours must be flying in a minute. Tr tremendous victory last time out. Is there any news, anything you can give us? For, um, not for you not forward? at the moment. We are looking at uh, the new year. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to look for the, the board did order for the British. So that's really exciting. Um, and I'm looking forward to this next one. I did say in the hotel, and I mean this, you are one of my favourite fighters. All actually, we, we both rave about yeah, Shannon, yeah, didn't she, we? Our last performance was fantastic. And you're always looking for things to build on. I think you know, that's the good thing about, about Shannon. Like, you know, she, she's looking to do the work, but she's also looking to improve all the time. And I think you see it in the performances. And I think the physical presence that she has, the strength that you have, I think is good now, but I think you could be so much stronger, so much more imposing figure in the ring. And that's a frightening thing, the fact that you can see that you, you are going to be a better fighter just by just by having, you know, keeping busy. I think that's the key for you. And it's hard for uh, your weight you know, to get the, the fight, enough fights to get busy enough to get those ruining fights into place. Because right now, you're at a level now where you're European level, and that's the next step is world level. So there's, there's how, it's, it's difficult for women boxing. How, how do you get that? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, there, there, there's no there's no middle learning ground for you. You go from being boxing people who are not that good to boxing world level fighters almost immediately. But the potential in the performances is there to be a world class fighter. I think you're there or thereabouts already. And, and, and I agree, you are scary. So anything you want to do during this broadcast, you can do it. Okay, we will not question you, <laughs> Shannon. All right, me, Mike. Costello and Barry, we went to a cinema, we had a nice little day out, didn't we? And we got to watch over Taylor Cameron once. Here in Dublin on that night, sat at ringside, it was absolutely deafening. It, it, it was unreal, it was deafening, like you say. And this, this fight was split a little bit, I felt as well. A lot of people thought Chantel Cameron would just be too fresh, too big, too strong. Uh, and the experience, some felt, would be too great for Katie Taylor. When I see that ring walk, though, I was convinced Katie Taylor was going to win. I thought she's not going to lose this. She she looked so focused. This was her moment. But what a start from Chantel Cameron. The first bell went. She was all over Katie Straight Taylor. Straight on the front Straight foot. on her. Katie Taylor beats you on rhythm of her work. She jumps. She moves in up with her feet really well. And then she fires in three-punch combination. Bam, bam, bam. There's not lots on the shots. They're effective. And then she moves her feet back in straight lines. What Cameron did was walk her down. So when Katie Taylor took that step back, she's on the ropes. Yeah. So she can't, she can't get that bounce of a rhythm in her work. But what also what she did very well with Chandler Cameron is even though she pushed her back with the long jab, she never got too close to allow Katie Taylor to, to, to jump into attack. She was always a further enough away to take a half a step back and make Katie Taylor fall short quite often, I felt. I thought it was 
This, this for me, tactically, was a perfect display for The Cameron. Belgian, Delphine Persoon, tried to put it on Katie Taylor, mm. but not with the same kind of educated work. She was always, always there to get hit. I'm, I'm, see, Katie Taylor is so effective, but actually, the, what she does, she does in every fight. The rhythm is the same. It's hard to counteract. But if you're physically strong enough, which Chandler Cameron is, and have enough weight in that left hand to push her back, and, and be the physical presence to walk her to the rope, you got a chance, and I think she showed that's, up perfectly. That's exactly what you said there, that lead hand, the jab, and what, exactly what she did in the McCaskill fight. That Every time she touched with that lead hand, she knew she could let the back hand go. She was working away. It was the jab again. I feel this time, Katie Taylor has to be first. She can't allow Chantel Cameron to, to work away because she had a lot more success when she started rallying back with combinations. Katie Look at these Taylor. left hooks to the body as well though from oh, Cameron. Sickening. You talk about the lead left hand, the left hooks to the body time and time mm. again. And she's sitting down on the shots. Where, where, where Katie Taylor's rallying with fast punches you know, like she's does so well, especially in these two minute rounds, Cameron's willing to sit down on the shots, not try and pick up the points to, to make those body shots tell, to make those uppercuts through the middle tell. And what Cameron did as well, she didn't panic. When, Kate, when Taylor had success and the crowd went crazy, she didn't panic. Including Conor McGregor in the background. <laughs> well, yeah, it's fantastic cheerleader, isn't he? But, uh, but that was it, though. she never panicked under any pressure. She always just thought, you know, that's okay, I know, I know I'm going to get hit. I'm in, with, I'm in with Katie Taylor. Just let's just go stick to the plan. Hands high, we'll be on a nice solid jab. And then when she fires, I got a punch with her. And what it proved is that in this next, in this next fight, in this rematch, Katie Taylor has to change something she's never done before. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of it's up here in this room, actually. Look at what? But because confidence is so high for Cameron. You think about Cameron, I mean, she, she's only lost a handful of rounds. I think before going into the McCaskill fight, she's only lost two or three rounds to Mary McGee. She goes into the McCaskill fight, wins it comfortably, and now she's just beaten one of the greatest, if not the greatest females of all time. On the flip side, Katie Taylor, she's going to have to exercise mental demons. You can see how gutted she is there. That's what I'm intrigued to see in that first belt. Who's mentally going to be switched still, on? The undisputed super lightweight champion of the world, Chantel Il Capo Cameron. Well, that is tonight's main event. Look at that at the top there. Every single title you could wish to achieve is on the line. The rematch, Chantel Cameron, the champion, versus Casey Taylor, the legend, who's going to come out on top this evening. And lots more to come on the zone. What a schedule we have got for you. This will be the greatest atmosphere you have ever witnessed in a boxing ring. Here we go. That was one of the most incredible fights I've ever seen. Stuff from Kelly. A lovely shot. One of these, pound and pound, best in the world. This is a championship fight. forward to and we have another fight to look forward to now our second fight of the night is ready and so is our MC so let's hand over to David Diamante now ladies and gentlemen from the three arena here in Dublin Ireland we are set to go with a special super featherweight title attraction now entering the arena fighting out of talent Dublin Ireland Liam Gaynor And here is the extremely tough Dublin-born Liam Gaynor. Now based in Bolton, he's had 14 fights as a pro. Ten wins and just the four defeats. Three of the defeats have been by unbeaten fighters, so no disgrace there. The first of the defeats come by the tall, awkward, very awkward, I have to say, Ed Harrison over six rounds back in 2020, before bouncing back to winning Wayne with four wins on the spin. But he did lose again when he stepped up to eight rounds for the first time against Belfast's Cole Murphy for the Celtic featherweight title. It was a close fight, one. It was 77 75 in favour of Murphy. But he proved Gaynor he's tough, he's game, he's durable, and he always comes to fight.
And now entering the arena, the undefeated from Belfast, the kid, John Cooney. Twice the UK, three times also. And this is his second fight in Ireland. He made his debut in Spain back in November 2020, beating Christian Abassa. Joel Sanchez was his next victim, beating him back in the Guadalajara Arena in Spain. Then it was a visit to Brussels, Belgium, where he scored his first knockout early in the first round. Very, very confident, sure of himself, lots of natural flair and lots of natural ability. John Cooney. Ladies and gentlemen, from Dublin, Ireland, live on the zone, we are set to go with a special super featherweight title attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, C4 Energy Drink, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside, all from Ireland. Colin Byrne, David Irving, and Emil Teat. At the sound of the belt, your third man in the ring, also from Ireland, referee Paul McCullough. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant Celtic Super Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the orange with the black trim. He scaled nine stone, two pounds, eight ounces. His professional record, 10 victories against four defeats, fighting out of talent, Dublin, Ireland, Liam Gaynor. Gaynor. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the red trunks with the gold trim. He scaled nine stone, three pounds, six ounces. His professional record, a perfect one. Nine fights, nine victories, with two of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Belfast, please welcome John the Kid Cooney. Cooney. Okay, gentlemen, there's both another rules. Bay may come on to all times, touch gloves, God bless. Well, this could be a lively one, this. Like I say, John Cooney, extremely confident. Sure of himself, sure of his boxing ability. His know how unbeaten against, like I said, a tough Liam Gaynor. Barry, this could be tasty. Well, yeah, it could. I think it's a real, you know, a real test here for Cooney on paper. But he started off really fast, aggressive, nice sharp as well with the, with the shots. I'm really trying to punch through the target here, Cooney. Yeah, hearing him speak throughout the week, he was saying I've heard Eddie Hearn talking about exciting and looking good, and that's exactly what I'm looking to do. It's a nice fan-friendly style. Positive start, Shannon. Yeah, it's good. He's leading with that jab and he's bringing that right hand through, which is nice. He's taking it to the body, which is giving the variation. Um, but it's, it would be nice to see if, as the round carries on, he'll take that jab, turn it into a hook. I think that would be quite nice and uh, would work well. Yeah, just fencing with their lead hands at the minute. Which usually happens when an orthodox fights a southpaw. Cooney just looking at that left hand. You see that? Oh, it's oh, a lovely left hand. We've seen two tremendous left hands. That was a lovely shot from Cooney. Right on the point of the chin. They're usually tough. Gainer dropped heavily. Up what a shot there. that was. Yeah, he got too early there, Gainer. Cooney's got to jump all over him now. Stabbing that left to the body. Looking for the hooks. Downstairs, upstairs. There's a nice little right hook. Can't see even another right hook from Cooney. The referee jumps in and he waves it off. What a result, what a victory for John Cooney. He yes. said he yes. was going to bring the action, he was going to bring the fire, and that's exactly what he's done. What a shot, something what a victory, Barry. Something in the air tonight, isn't it? Literally, you know, Cooney's not known as a, as a huge puncher, but again, it's not, it's not about the power, it's the timing of the shot. So the lovely left hand, you push it back with the, with the right hand, made space to that left hand right through the middle, and had, 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 you know, gained in all sorts of trouble. Gainer got up too fast. But the finish there from Cooney was impressive because he, he, he jumped at him straight away. But he didn't rush his work. He picked his shots. He worked to the body as well. 
but you could, there was a point there you know, just, just before the referee stopped it where Gaynor's legs dipped and he, and he bravely brought himself back up before he went on the floor and the referee still seen enough by that point and rightly stepped in Shannon talk us through the shot no I was about to say that the same energy that he brought to the way in he brought to the ring and sometimes we don't always see that um, but I thought that was brilliant like you said he was fencing with that front hand I would have liked to see a hook over the top but he managed to get the job done and it's finished now you see here look at that look at this timing lovely he almost did fake a hook if anything he'll fake the hook there and then just literally committed with that left hand right through the middle of the guard and this I think this is the follow-up here Oh, that's a great shot. Look, see the legs dip there, but he stay, gain is so brave, he stays up. But that was enough for the referee to see that. Listen, he's just taking punishment here, kid. And when he finished it, what was nice is that he didn't smother his work. I feel like we see that with a few fighters where they've got the knockout and they finish it, but they sometimes smother the work. Oh, yeah, that right hook was dangerous when that one. He done well with the knees dip, but he stayed on his feet. And we see Cooney lean over the ropes, talking to Eddie Hearn. I bet it was something along the lines of, where's the contract? Let, show me a contract. You can see what it means to the young man over the moon. Tremendous victory that was. And he will definitely be eager, itching to get back out there. What a result for John Cooney. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Paul McCullough calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute, 29 seconds of round number one, declaring your winner by TKO, and the new Celtic Super Featherweight Champion, John the Kid Cooney. Yeah. The respect shown, as we like to see, and we usually do see, but the belt around the new champion, John Cooney. What a shot that was. What a way to, to go into double figures as a professional. Now 10-0. It really was a, a special shot, Barry. Yeah, and you know, picking up your first title is always a big thing, isn't it? But doing it in an impressive fashion like that, you know, that gives you the momentum you need, certainly. You know, and I go back to saying what Eddie Hearn always goes on about every show. You know, you've got to show why I should put you on the next one more than the guy yeah. before you. Well, it's literally like a game of top trumps a minute. <laughs> really I can't is. to see what, what, what we got, what we got to on the next but fight. They're all responding, and that's what's so great. So, no pressure in January when you fight, Shannon. <laughs> no, no pressure at all, no pressure. I've had two now, and I think it'll be a flying, flying uh, 2024. Yeah, don't worry, you're in safe hands, and so is Eddie. But look what it means to, to John and the team. Mark Dunlop there to John Cooney's right. He promised that it was going to be a brilliant display. And I, I look forward to hearing from John Cooney here. He's had a lot to say throughout the week. He's backed it up, as you said, Shannon. Very sure of himself. Great performance. He's ringside with Jamie Ward and promoter Eddie Hearn. Let's, win. Let's hear from the victor now. Many more of them to come. John Cooney, congratulations. Look at that first professional title on your shoulder. You're the new Celtic Super Featherweight Champion. We saw what that meant to you in the ring there. Just talk us through the emotions and how you're feeling now. Yeah, it means the world. Obviously, these years of dreaming, years of believing, years of hard work to get me here. And to me, it's only the start. That's why I've been walking around with so much confidence all week, because I know this is only the beginning. You told me earlier this week, I'm going to knock Liam Gaynor out. I only needed to watch 30 seconds of him to know that. With respect to Liam, how does it feel to have delivered on your promise tonight? Listen, Liam, Liam's a very durable fighter. If you let him go past two or three, he, he warms to your power. And he, he, can, he can take a, a good shot, do you know what I mean? But the thing is, with lads like that, if you get in there early and catch them clean, I honestly believe I can hit as hard as any 130-pounder in the world. I genuinely believe that. You know, I'm, I'm a bit heavier than super featherweight now in the ring, I can tell you that much. Talk us through the finish, John. Talk us through the first shot that put him down and what that, the timing of it and what happens following that on. To be honest, I, the first few rounds, I was only going to throw straight left hands, but his head was coming out to the right. And I just said, you know what, I'll change it up just with one looper over a little bit. And I knew once I caught him like that, that was it. All I got to do is be a little bit educated. I probably did rush it a small bit, I caught up. Went in and bumped on my head, but uh, excitement, do you know what I mean? Eddie wants exciting fights, I want to put people to sleep, do you know what I mean? It, it, and I hope they get up, do you know what I mean? But at the same time, I, I love boxing, I love watching it, and the fights I want to watch are when people are going for it, and that's what I always intend to do when I get in that ring.
In terms of the final moments, you caught him, the knees dipped. Can you understand why the referee had seen enough at that stage? Yeah, look, it was only going to go one way, and that was me putting him asleep. Like, do you know what I mean? So the ref did a good job in stepping in when he did, because all it took was one more clean shot, and it could have been worse, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think it's safe to say, John. You've enjoyed the whole week, haven't you, a fair bit? Yeah, yeah lapping up, man. Everyone keeps saying, you know, enjoy it, enjoy it. I was like, you don't need to tell me. I've been envisioning this for years. Everything's, it's like I've already been here. Do you know what I mean? I've done this a hundred million times in my head. So, yeah, it's just, listen, more to come. Do you know what I mean? Hopefully, Eddie now can get me some big fights next year. I want, I want, I want Reese Bellotti next. I want that Commonwealth title. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I know Eddie's got Reese. He fought there not too long ago. I'm happy to step up and fight him in March or April. Any little holiday and then, uh, yeah, I'm ready. Let's grab a word with the training team as well. What was the game plan tonight? Because John came out firing from the opening bell. Did you always believe he could win the fight in that fashion? Well, we honestly believe John had the power to, to do that job, but we talk, we were, our plan was to take our time, take our time, take our time. Gainer's a durable guy, as it was, it was a seen in the previous fights. We just took our time, took our time, took our time. That was the plan. And John. Fortunately, he caught him early. He took his opportunity and went for it, and we're all happy. Well, let's hear from promoter Eddie Hearn, because there was a big smile on Eddie Hearn's face. Let's see if he's happy as well. Eddie, we just said to Giorgio Vizioli, two first-round knockouts on before the bell. I think, in terms of the fans, they're loving it, but you, you keep piling on the pressure for these young fighters to not just win, but excite. They're clearly listening. Yeah, I mean, now we've got a fill for 25, 30 minutes while we wait for the next fight. And, <laughs> but, you know, exactly what you want. You want to come out. And if you, if you talk about being you know, a real threat to the, the big domestic players at 130 pounds, you've got to be going through opposition like that. Now, going through it like that is different to just dominating a performance and winning on points. That really shows you your miles above that level, which is a big statement for John as well. And, you know, it's the first time I've got to see him tonight up close. Mark's been harping on about him for ages. And you know, Mark does a great job because he pushes all these guys and it's difficult to get a shot on the big stage. And this was probably John's only chance on the big stage. And it came around in Ireland with a lot of support. But he took the most of it. You know, he, he made the most of it. And he made an impression. And that means you get another opportunity. And if you don't do that, really, then you're back trying to carve out another opportunity. So a massive night for his career. You know, and, and I like the fact that they come from a background where it is, where my chance comes, I'll take it. So ready to step up. You've got Liam Dillon. He's going to fight Reese Bellotti. The winner of that can go on and fight you know, John, and I think maybe an, another fight in between. But like I said, if he's willing to step through those levels, a lot of exciting nights ahead. John, final one from you. For those who are in the arena, that you can hear them, the pockets of the support making them, their voices heard in here tonight. Yeah. I'm sure you're looking forward to enjoying your victory later on with them this evening. Do you have a message you want to leave tonight? Yeah, I just want to say a big thank you to my sponsors, you know, everyone who supported me from the start, family, friends, do you know, people like, like obviously I haven't had this big opportunity from the, the, my, the start of my career. So getting here has been a struggle. I made my debut three years ago this week and it's been a long haul to get here. I've been going through a lot the last couple of weeks. My business got flooded last week. My barber shop, my car got wrote off. I've been dealing with a lot of things these last couple of weeks just to get here and get over the line and hopefully push on and have a big 2024. It means the world to me and my family and my supporters. So yeah. Have you got a place in mind to put the belt at home? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've got a mental piece. Yeah, yeah. I've got money, many more to come. Many more to come. It suits you. John Cooney, congratulations on the new. Well done. Well done, boys. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Yep, John Cooney goes to 10 and 0 as a professional. And this is how, Barry, what a shot this was. Yeah, again, another, another real positive performance from, you know, from a young guy trying to make his stake his claim. He came out like, like you should take the center of the ring, so he dominates the biggest space of the ring. We'll be on the jab, seeing the space, and fully committed to the shot. So he's see, but they're not just throwing the shots, he's seeing the target for it. He's making sure that he's not just swing, winging a shot in and abandon. He's looking, he's seeing the target, he's hitting it clean. And even there, the, the, uh, as Shannon was saying, Shannon, formerly Sandy. But <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, as Shannon was saying, no, he didn't get too close, the rushes were. He took his time with the shot, he picked the shots really well, and I thought that was a, you know, for, again, for a step up, and that was for him, really, that was a really, really good performance. Referee done the right thing there, Shannon. Yeah, and I think, um, going back to the, the stoppage, it, yes, he's had 10 fights, but it's the, the occasion, and I feel, you know, again, he did not let that this occasion and this night get to him, and he, he managed to get the job done in fantastic fashion. You like the winner of that fight, didn't you, Liam Dillon? Reese Bellotti, oh, that... John Cooney for the winner. Liam Dillon versus Reese Bellotti is a fantastic fight. First and foremost, that's a brilliant fight to make. That's, 
that that has every round of it, every round that that has still acted. That's an exciting fight. But yeah, he's taking his claim now. You know, that it'd be another big step up for him. Another, yeah. another is, big is it challenge. Too soon? If he can get one in between, yeah, a decent I, name, eleven and zero. I think they see more. I'd like to see more of him. He would say, "Give it to me now." Yeah. I'd like to see more of him. You know, maybe another little slightly step up or a similar level to Gainer, where maybe he doesn't get the shot early and see what he, he looks like throughout the rounds. But yeah, the potential on that showing. Him against Bellotti is a fantastic. Him against Dylan, either one of them, is a really good fight to watch. How important, like we know, Shannon, about having an, a, a team around you just to pull on the reins a little bit. Like John Cooney said, he'll jump in with anyone now, whether it be a British title, a Commonwealth title. How, is, how important has it been for you, I guess? You'd jump in with anyone now, wouldn't you? How important is it is having that team around oh, it's you? It's so important. You know, I would fight anyone now and I would fight for a title now, but even I know that it's not the right thing. It's not the right right thing to do. Um, although I think I'm at a good level, you still need those fights and those that the experience of these nights to to get you to where you need to do. Like Barry always tells me I need to, to jab more, and I believe I do. I need to jab more to set up the shots to to um, get the combinations off a lot better. So I've still got a lot of learning to do, but having the team to kind of keep you grounded and to keep you where you're at at that time is super important. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say take a breath after that. But as Eddie said there, we've probably got about 20, 25 minutes to fill now, so we can't breathe. We've got to talk. Yeah, I haven't got much to say, really, Darren. Um, <laughs> it's not like you, Barry. It's been a really bold... Yeah, no, yeah not, not at all. Listen, it's, this, this is a big night for, for boxing, I think, and it's an important night for women's boxing because... Well, quickly, before we go to the main event, let's have a look at no, tonight's undercard. Talk. And then we'll go, then we'll we'll go into no, the main event. Talk. Let's have a look at the undercard. And what an undercard it is, the very impressive Sky Nicholson in with the tough Lucy Wildheart. We see Wildheart in with Michaela Meyer. 24 hours notice, and she really comes to fight. The local hero, Thomas Carty, fighting Dan Garber. Dan Garber from fighting stock, his uncle, Steve, for John Fury, knocked John Fury out for Henry Ackham, one day Lennox Lewis, so he's from fighting stock. He's Garber, but Carty, after that last victory, was very impressive. Paddy Donovan versus Danny Ball. How good? The question is, how good is Paddy Donovan? We know Danny Ball looked very, very good last time against Jamie Robinson, but this will show us what Paddy Donovan is all about. And Jamie Ward, we've seen him asking the questions ringside. He asked me a very good question at Thursday's press conference. Is this a good time to fight Gary Cully or not? Well, Reese Mould gets the opportunity to fight Gary Cully after that. After that crushing defeat to Jose Felix last time out. And what an undercard we've got, Barry. So, go on. <laughs> Is it a good time to box a six foot two lightweight? There's never a good but, time to box a six foot two lightweight. I guess why he's asking that, Barry. Confidence. And the obvious, yeah. Is it a good time in the sense, how's his head going to be at? Well, it might be the worst time because, you no, know, he, he really now has to make a statement here against Reese Mould. He's naturally bigger. Reese Mould coming up from featherweight originally. So, you know, this is a fight where well, Reese Mould's a very, very good fighter. Experience. He's in a fantastic, you know, he's surrounded by Josh Warrington all the time. So he has great preparation for any fight. But he's six foot two. That, that's the thing with, yeah. with Gary Kelly. Six foot two, he's a softball. He can bang. If he, if he keeps it long, this is a fight that he can look really good in. This is a good confidence builder for him. But if he gets it, if he gets it right, if he gets it wrong, then the wheels come off and his career looks in tatters. You have to say that. And it, with only one defeat, and you, know, you tend to think there's only like, 27, like, you know, we've got plenty of time on his side to get another loss. But it's the manner of the loss after coming off of, of such a horrible stoppage that if he, if he were to get dominated again, then he's in trouble. Shadon, I'll ask you the question. You obviously see Gary Cully's last performance. It, it was a crushing defeat to Jose Felix. Do you think it's a good time or a bad time to, to fight Gary Cully? I think it's I think it's a bad time. I think he's going to be extremely focused. You know, again, I know I keep saying about the occasion, but it is a super big occasion tonight. Um, you know, he did get a bad knockout on his last one, and I feel like tonight he's got to make uh, right those wrongs. Um, and I think it's going to be a very very good performance from Gary Cully. Paddy Donovan, we've been impressed with him. He, he's looked very good. We was impressed though with Danny Ball last time against Jamie Robinson. It's a good test. It's a, it's a real test. Like. I, I did, I did um, 
had his debut, he's fantastic. You know, like he, he has all the signs of a, of a, of a star, he really does. A great boxing ability, really good brain, he's flashy, looks the part as well. As, all that helps with the packaging, of course, but he can fight and he can punch. But Danny Ball's a good fighter. He, he's beat Sam Gilly, who's on a roll now, as a weight above, who's Commonwealth champion. You know, and you know, Mason Cartwright, you know, that British level, they're really good fighters. So he's had good wins. Danny Ball's tall, he can, be, he can box long, he can be tricky. So it's a real test for Paddy Donovan. Uh, maybe his biggest test. Oh, for sure. But but I do feel that, you know, sometimes you look at a fight and think, he's got something. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but he has that something that's maybe going to take him to another level. But these are the fights you find out about that. It's not how he, it's not if he can win, which is not a given, but it's how he can win. See, again, with someone like Paddy Donovan, who you're, you're told to be a future star, you never look if he can win a fight, you always look how he can win a fight. There's a pressure there, which is not always nice, but that's the pressure you put on people who you, who you elevate to a state this automatically. Although, I never had that, I had the luxury of learning my trade. And you didn't have it, you had it worse than me, but not like, uh, say, uh, our friend Carl Zaghi, who when he turned pro, you've got to go to the top. You were always going to go to the top, but it wasn't the same urgency. You know, and it's just different for these guys. And Paddy Donovan has a little bit of that on his back, a little bit of a weight of expectation that can sometimes drag you down. So every time he steps up a level, he's got to look better than he did the level below. And that's that's a horrible place to be in. You can't just win. I step up a level, you know, and, and you win. And that's it. You step up another, you just keep winning, keep winning, keep winning. For him, it's not. You've got to keep improving your performances. Look better than the last fight. Don't matter if you're stepping up a level, you've got to look better all the time if you're going to be this golden boy that, that, that they sold you when you signed with top rank. Let's not forget that. No, Bob Adam is calling him the golden boy. This is going to be the kid who's going to take over the world at one point. Well, look, we mentioned tonight's chief support, Gary Cully versus Reese Mould. Cully's made some sacrifices. He's gone to Liverpool. He's teamed up with Joe McNally. Let's see how he has been training for this fight. Yeah, it's good to have Gary in the, in the same gym. We spent many of the years on the RS national team together since 2012. Training camp, competitions um, together. So yeah, it's good. It's a matter of things work out where both now in um, Liverpool training together. I've wanted to get back to my fans and become that Irish star that I feel like I can be in headline shows back in Belfast. So for me, this is the first step in doing so. November 25th, I've got a job ahead of me. We're going back to Dublin, which is my hometown, and we're going straight back there after coming off a loss. I'm not in the winners club right now, and I believe that, that that's where I'm supposed to be. And there's a bit of pressure to get back into that club. Well, I'm not feeling no outside pressure. This is personal, and this is this is me versus me this time around. Something wasn't quite right with me. I didn't really know it at the time, but my mind wasn't fully focused. Everything was just planned for the party after and the celebrations and wow, what a what a show, what a what a week! And uh, I took my eye off having a fight in front of me. I've been through some ups and downs in my life, but that was definitely the hardest. It felt like the world was ending at one point, but I think I've learned a lot from it as well. And I'm looking forward to showing that, like I said, on November 25th. I've got the second chance and I've got to make it right. So to come back and show them that I really am what I say I am, it's important to me for sure. Jump, step back. Yeah. If I want to go in there and make it dirty, make it ugly, have a turret with Troy, I can do so. I want to back on the back foot, make him miss for 10 rounds and outbox him just like Josh Kelly did, I can do so. Beautiful shot. And again. I probably punch, if not harder, just as hard as Troy. But what separates me from every fighter is my mind. I adopt so quickly in there. Bam! Back him up, doubly. Here's the catch. There's a few comments where he disrespected me, saying about turning the fight down. Let's put it straight. I've never turned the fight down against anybody. Anyone that came out and said that I didn't want the fight and I wanted an easier fight is absolute nonsense. Final message for Troy, just be prepared on the night. It's going to be very, very, very noisy in there on December 2nd. I want to put pain on somebody. I want to put on a performance and beat somebody down and show I'm at the level that I say I'm at. I bring you gifts, an unrivaled schedule. 
Well, yeah, we've, we've mentioned already our chief support for the evening, Gary Cully, and we've seen there, I mentioned that he's made these sacrifices. How important do you feel that is, Barry, to get his career back on track? Yeah, I think you know, so you're always looking for that extra edge, that extra bit of knowledge, and sometimes it's not, it's not even the knowledge, sometimes it's a different voice telling you the same thing. Sometimes a fight, you know that, sometimes you just need a new voice to say, and, and know the same thing just to invigorate you. But he's in a, he's in a fantastic camp, he really is. But he, he's a talent, we've seen that before, but before that slip up you know, in, in his last contest, he was flying, he looked a million dollars. Yeah, well, see here, unbelievable how dangerous he is with that left hand. We're seeing now the variation with the shot. It was all going so well for Gary Cully, wasn't it, Shannon? Yeah, it was. You know, I feel like, you know, when he, he fights and he punches and his hands don't come back up, but he's got away with it for so long. Um, so I'm hoping in this fight that he actually keeps him up a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, again, seeing that left hand and... It's just a beautiful shot, Barry, but he can't just rely on that, can he? It doesn't look like there's much on it, to be honest. It's good technique, and he punch, he sort of lifts his elbow, so he punches over, especially if you've got a high guard, because he's so tall, he can punch over your guard, and then the punches you don't really see. So that he's hitting you blind, and that's where he really gets the power from. Good technique, lifts the elbow, brings it over your guard, and because he's so tall, he can get away with that. And I think what Shannon says, right, you know, he does get it, because he's so tall, he can have his hands low, and lean back and get away with it. Yeah, and that's, a, that's not always a good habit, because at some point, someone's going to slide him with the front foot and throw big over the top. And that's what I think Rishmo will be looking to do, like to try and get him sliding close, big shots up low, dip low, throw high. That's what you want to do against Gary Cully. Put pressure on him. For Mould, is to put pressure on Cully very quickly, very early, because there is any, any, any sort of um, damage to his, to his confidence at all. You want to embed that back into him really early in the fight, make him panic, make him worry about the past ghosts and worry and scars of the previous fight, and that'll put him in a good stead. But I think Cully will come out fast, aggressive, want to make a statement, and then most importantly, when you're six foot two at that weight, just keep it long. That's all you've got to do is keep it long. And I, I, it, it's, it's easier said than done. I mean, but we were saying, weren't we, last time we was here, like, you've got those advantages, use them. You're in there with somebody whose only asset, really, in comparison, is his power. You know, he, he can land a big shot, Felix, but you've got those advantages, like Barry says, Shannon, you use them. Yeah, and I think with Rhys Mould, he um, needs to capitalise on the mistakes, look at what he done in his past few fights, um, and see where he can he can get in on that. Um, but, you know, Gary Cully, he is a tall fighter, he's tall. Um, but, you know, we have to see if he has gone back into the gym and, you know, um, right those wrongs. Well, that is tonight's chief support. What a fight is. So much on the line. Not that you need any reminding, but tonight's main event is Chantel Cameron versus Katie Taylor. For all the marbled, undisputed, super lightweight title. There they are there. Both confident. Speaking to Katie Taylor, she says she underperformed in the first fight. She's taking confidence from the fact that there's more to come from her. Still at her age now and with all that she's achieved, but Chantel Cameron, she... They, they, it's almost been a little scary, if I'm honest, Barry. The confidence, the aura around her. I spoke to her at Wednesday, Wednesday's media workout, and she was saying the first time they fought, she was almost in awe of Katie Taylor a little bit. She's beating her now, and she's going to go... She, apparently, the bell's going to go, she's going to get out of those traps nice and fast and stick it on Katie Taylor. Thinking and believing you could do something is one thing. Knowing you can do it because you've done it, is a totally different prospect. She knows what she can do. There's a caveat to that. Katie Taylor knows what to expect from Chantal Cameron also, because Chantal Cameron shouldn't really change much of what she did, because what she did on that night was perfect, I felt, for, 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 for Katie Taylor. She did everything right. She stole the space with the front foot, but she kept it long behind a real solid jab, didn't allow Katie Taylor any rhythm with that bounce, little bounce she does before she gets rhythm with a three-punch combination. She had banging the jab at it all the time. Jab, jab, keep it long and then push you back to the rope where you, got, you can't get no rhythm with your feet, and then work away, and then, uh, and then work the body as the, as the rounds went on. I think, if anything, she should start faster and earlier to the body. But what we know with Katie Taylor, what she's shown throughout her career, even in wins, she's had some close wins, but that's because she's willing to fight anybody. Let's not forget that. We, we always go, oh, she's had some close wins, 
but she'll fight anybody anywhere at, at, as, as, as we see now at any weight by the way so she will not give up i think and and for the first time in her whole career she has to prove a point there's doctors now for the first time they weren't doctors before she was always katie taylor will find a way oh. now can katie taylor find a way i can I, honestly i cannot wait I cannot wait for this. But anyway, we'll chat more about tonight's main event. We have reporter Jamie Ward alongside promoter Eddie Hearn. Well, promoter Eddie Hearn, when we have a bit of time to film before the bell, you always know we've had a very exciting start. Obviously, we've got Emmett Brennan returning to the ring in a Celtic light heavyweight title fight before Zell for Barrett, before we move to the main broadcast at 7 p.m. How is your excitement building? The uh, anticipation has been brilliant all week, but being here ringside now, it's getting yeah. livelier. Someone just delivered some muffins and brownies upstairs, and I was just having one, and I got a message <laughs> saying, Eddie, to ringside to fill. So, obviously, when we get these knockouts, we need to talk more. And, you know, you talk more about what you see in the ring and, and what you see in statements like Vizioli and Cooney. I mean, particularly for George Vizioli, who you know, is one of our big hopeful stars of the future. There's a really big run of talent coming through now that you're seeing debut in and you know lately next week lately bustle gig next week making his professional debut in in belfast and giorgio tonight jimmy saints i mean there's so many to mention you know and uh, cameron vong of course in belfast next week i'm really excited about the future and i had a feeling tonight when i came in the venue i looked around i think i think we're going to get a wild night i think we're going to get a night of drama maybe some upsets maybe some knockouts you didn't expect as well because this is a card full of people who are unbelievably excited to be a part of it. There's, there's outside of obviously Chantel and, and Katie, for everybody on this card tonight to fight in front of 9,000 people here in Dublin with the atmosphere being what it will be. They'll be sharp, they'll be switch on, they'll be nervous. And, and like I said, I think we're gonna get a night full of drama. In terms of that main event, you, you've seen Katie and Chantel all week. We've heard from them all week. We've listened to the mind games, whatever verbals there might be. So many questions. For you, Eddie, when you take your seat there ringside a little later on tonight, what are the biggest questions, do you believe, in this main event? Do you know what? I really feel like this fight is all about the first half of the fight. I think if Katie Taylor can't find a way or a lead in the first four or five rounds of this fight, she's going to find it very difficult on the back end. Last time, Chantel did a, a fantastic job. And you always hear, you know, when, there's, when, a, when an opponent needs to be aggressive and be on the front foot and, and make a dent in an opponent early, it's easier said than done. But Chantel did it perfectly in the first fight. You remember Katie's you know, hair came out of the braids. She was ruffled. She looked really tired as early as the first and second round of the fight. And Chantel needs to make the same impression on this fight as well. I think Katie's going to be razor sharp in the first few rounds. And if she can build up a lead over four or five rounds, Chantel's going to come on like a train and Katie's going to do what she always does, which is go to war in six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She was forced to go to war early in the fight last time and that was the perfect fight for Chantel Cameron. And in terms of that chief support, we keep talking about, and the guys have just been saying on the commentary desk there here before the bell, good time, bad time to fight Gary Colley. Do you think when he's arriving at the arena tonight, there will be deja vu for him? It was the same setting as it was here in May when it didn't go to plan for him. Truly, how do you think he'll be feeling? Do you know what? This is, this is a tremendous banked arena. And when you stand up there on the walkout stage, I did it early, and you sort of kind of look out. I mean, it's hallucinogenic in a way. And especially if you've experienced what Gary Cully's experienced just a few months ago here. Last time, the place erupted for him. He's been very low-key, very quiet since then. We keep asking about good time, bad time. We will not know at all until he steps through these ropes and starts taking the first few shots from Reese Mould. That kind of stoppage can really affect a fighter, not just mentally, but physically moving forward in his career as well. Gary Cully, you know, always looks tight on the scales. Looked tight again on the scales yesterday, and Reese Mould's team were egging him on, saying, look at him, you know, he's done at the weight. People talk about, should he move to 140? They believe they can make it safely. They were happy with the way they made weight. But Reese Mould will be a tough man to beat tonight as well and a massive opportunity for him. So, you know, last time, this was one of the best atmospheres I've ever seen in a, in, in a, in a ring. When Gary Cully lost, it was like head in hands. When Katie Taylor lost, it was like Turn Irish boxing's done yeah. forever. We're back here a few months later and this place is going to go off later. If Gary Cully can get that win, Going into the Katie Taylor fight, the atmosphere will be even louder in the hope that they can do the double tonight. And there's a lot of English and Irish matchups as well. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to Paddy Donovan against Danny Boy. I think it will be a great fight. And, you know, Thomas Carty 
as well against against Dangar, but someone's going to sleep very early in that fight. Sky Nicholson, of course, opening the live broadcast at 7 p.m. Eddie, so much to look forward to still, not just tonight, this year. One place to watch it all. The zone, of course, in Belfast next week. Michael Conlon, Jordan Gill for a great card. Then we're at the small matter for San Francisco. Devin Haney, Regis Progre, Sonny Edwards, Bam Rodriguez. But just talk to us about the recent news regarding the day of reckoning in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, tremendous news. I mean, as we, you know, we moved very quickly recently to make sure that we had a a big part of that card in Anthony Joshua headlining December 23rd against Otto Wilding, Dimitri Bivol, of course, against Lyndon Arthur, Jaya Pattaya as well. Um, you know, and news yesterday, of course, that that will be aired globally on the zone pay-per-view. I mean, massive uh, opportunity for the zone, and you know, this schedule just keeps getting better and better and better. You know, this little app that people talked about. Who wants to fight on an app? Well, I'll tell you who wants to fight on an app. The entire boxing world, and guess what? They are fighting on the app. The number one app in the world for sport and boxing, and the home of boxing. Unrivaled schedule, time and time again. And this run coming up, this end of year run, is something that we've never seen before. And our aim is to make sure that 2024 looks even better. I think when you look at the press conference for the day of reckoning, the launch presser, seeing all the faces up on that table, yourself and Frank, it was a little bit surreal at times, but I think it's safe to say, not only are we going to have great fights on the zone, but it's going to be an entertaining build-up, knowing all the different personalities. Yeah, they, I mean, they, you get lost in the fights, you know, and probably there's two or three too many. But this was, you know, the, the plan of His Excellency to just give a card where everyone went, wow. And, you know, whenever you get AJ headlining or Wilder headlining, it's wow. But do, see him doing it together on the same card, throwing Jarrell Miller against Daniel Dubois, again, Dimitri Bivol uh, against Lyndon Arthur, Jai Pattaya, you know, and other big fights beneath them as well. It's going to be an incredible night. Unbelievable value for fight fans as well. And, you know, for us, we want to see our boys get the business done. We're talking about our boys. What about Anthony Joshua? Because everyone always asks you, I think, every single interview you do about when's AJ going to fight Deontay Wilder. We know Wilder's on the card in a great fight with Joseph Parker. What are the dangers for AJ in this fight? Very tricky fight. Six weeks out, you decide to fight a southpaw. One that's coming in with tremendous momentum. You know, a big win in Russia against Gassiev recently. Otto Wilding fancies that. You saw it in his body language at the press conference. AJ, without really the time to go out to Dallas, Texas, uh, with Derek James, decides to stay in the UK with Ben Davison, who's been training with the last four or five weeks. Feels really good, feels comfortable. Ben's got the experience with Otto Wilding when he was in the corner for Tyson Fury. But this is a really dangerous fight. You know, we know that the two southpaw appearances against uh, Alexander Usyk were tough for AJ. Wilding is not Alexander Usyk in terms of his ability or his movement. I feel like AJ, if AJ can be aggressive in that fight, if he can grab that fight by the scruff of the neck, I think he could stop him and stop him convincingly. And look, we're all working towards what everybody wants. It's the reason why we're taking this fight. It's the reason why Wilder's on the card. It's the reason everybody's trying to bring this together to make AJ against Wilder. But it's all irrelevant if they don't both win on December 23rd. Well, December 23rd on the zone. There's a day of reckoning brewing in Saudi Arabia. Welcome everyone to the DAZN Boxing Show. Some big, big breaking news. December the 23rd in Saudi, Anthony Joshua will take on Otto Volin and Deontay Wilder will take on Joseph Parker. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Plus a great undercard as well. What do you make of all this? This is crazy. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. As a fan of the sport, I'm, I'm buzzing. Yeah. I'm buzzing. You know, I want to see these fights. There will be some though. There will be some. And I'm one of those some that will say, one second. So AJ's fighting December 23rd <laughs> in Saudi. Deontay Wilder's fighting December 23rd in Saudi, but not against each other. There will be some that are saying that. It's, it's, it's frustrating. It really is. And you think about that. But let's just, <laughs> in this division, let's just be happy they're fighting. You know, yeah. and And... and it's one step closer. I mean, I mean, now no, with the Saudi thing at the minute, it's changing the game. Look how quick this has happened. Insane. It, it, you know, when when would this ever happen before? This this is this is we you know we've been trying to get Wilder and, and 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 Joshua in the same building for about six years. Yeah, it's so, going to be strange even for there to be a press conference to see AJ and Wilder together. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen them together ever. Well, the press conference, like the <laughs> press conference will be the both them two. It won't be like they'll have them all together. I think. I think it'll just literally be the them two. Like the, it's disrespectful to the opponents, and by the way, I think you know Josh has got a really hard fight, a yeah. really hard fight. But you no, know, we we always want to see him and Wilder. Are you surprised that AJ is doing this again? Southpaw, Otto Volin coming off a good win against Murat Gassiev. No, he's surprised. I, I, I'm I'm not surprised. Yeah. I genuinely believe AJ will fight anyone. 
Okay. I, I, I genuinely do. I think a lot of people think he swerves people. He'll fight anyone. Mm. He'll fight anyone. I mean, he, he's not scared of a challenge. Um, I do think he's got the tougher test out of the two. Although Parker looked good last time out, I do feel Wilder will deal with Parker. Um, AJ has the Just harder one, fight. One round, though, in two years for Deontay Wilder. 38 yeah, that, That's yeah. all he needs. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's all he needs. <laughs> That's, um, a, that's a long distance. Person, yeah. <laughs> but, but I, I agree with that. I think you know. You look at you look at Joshua's record. You can't say that he, he's a guy who's really you know historically avoiding people. Mm. He boxed the best he can box, except except for two obvious names like Fury and, and Wilder, of course. But all the rest of them, he's going up against them all. So we're chucking in Gardner now, and that's all. Yeah, 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 <laughs> no, but I would no. And I think the you know, the Hellenius win, the, the way he got the fi- the performance wasn't fantastic, but the the finish was fantastic. And I think. The confidence we say needs that finish where he committed to an attack for the first time in a long time might be all he needed to get him get him somewhere where he should to be. almost unlock something. The biggest thing for me, the biggest takeaway for this for me is that AJ will have three fights in eight months. I mean, you have to go back to 2014 for AJ to have fought three times in a year. It's normally once every, unfortunately, once every 14 months for AJ. Now, three times in eight months, three training camps with Derek James plus Ben Davison behind the scenes. It's good, this it, is good, it's right? It's only a good thing. Yeah. It's only a good thing for Anthony Joshua um, for two reasons, his boxing and his bank account. Yeah. You know, for, for two reasons. Uh, and it's professional boxing, that's what it's all about. I, I feel uh, uh, Anthony Joshua to try and build that confidence. What Barry said there, you know, the way he finished Helene is really, really impressive. What I'll say is though that confidence of AJ isn't there, if you want to call it confidence. I, in some ways, think he's possibly a harder fighter to beat now because he, he doesn't want to get hit, so he sticks to his advantages. You know, he's got a long reach, he's got quick hands for a heavyweight, and he's kind of very disciplined now. He doesn't want to engage, and he picks his moment correctly against Hellenius. Though some people, you know, including myself at times, are a little frustrated because when he was in his early days, one of the most exciting heavyweights for a long time. But he's a very hard man to beat now. AJ oh, 2.0, isn't oh, it? Sorry, this feels like I had this conversation with Tony Bellew. I don't agree. I don't agree. But don't you think when he's reckless and he's letting his hands go, there's more openings in, now? See, you no, can't see, find the openings. See, I don't even think he was ever reckless. I, don't, I, I think this, we have this idea of what, what... Sorry, I don't want to start a fight with you. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if we had this idea of, of Joshua being this, like, this wrecking ball, he, he was always structured behind his work. But it, it, every, every punch he throws has to be a positive movement to go forward. That's what made him good. He put, he'd wait behind the jab to get punched on the right hand. No, he's punching with the, for a long time since, since Ruiz won. He's punching with that right hand. He's not committing with the jab. So he's, that right hand's only touching the tag and not punching through the tag. Yeah. Against, against the, the finish against uh, Hellenius, he stepped in with that jab and he punched right through the tag. He has that power for there. Him dancing around keeps him safe but doesn't beat anybody at the highest level. I, but I, I don't think he's going to have to go looking for opponents, which suits Anthony Joshua. Whereas before, I, I just, I don't, I can see both sides of the argument, if I'm deadly honest, but I, I, I do feel, for no, me... No, 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 see my it, side. It, yeah. well, I, will I, say. I get it, I, do, I get it, I get it, but, but you know, he's got Look, so many advantages. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Vladimir Klitschko sort of changed his style and it helped him sort of mm-hmm. later on in his career. What I will say about this Otto volume one, although it is a tough test, I mean, you don't get a better southpaw than Alexander Usyk. Mm. So, I mean, in terms of preparation leading up to an Otto Volin, he's not Usyk. So, AJ should be confident going into this one, no? He should be. I, I should be. But, again, I still feel, you know, he could do what, what Darren's saying. He's right. He was better in, in the second Usyk fight, though he might have lost it by a wider by a margin, ironically. But, so he can outbox Volin, but, and we want to see that. But with every fight he has... We're looking at it with a view of him boxing Wilder, Uzik, or Fury. That's the three right now. Or in Ghana. Or in Ghana. Or in Ghana. Or in Ghana. It's true. <laughs> but, but either way, yeah, that, that, that's what it is. And boxing that way, he doesn't beat him. He has to be the. the uh, for me, he has to be the the aggressive fighter behind that good structure that he has. But it has to be with the thought of punching you right through, right through the back of your head. If, if AJ fight, fights Wilder, how would you want AJ to approach that fight? Right at him. You think right at him? Uh, so uh, first to land a shot, basically. Well, well not even, no, I always thought, cause what, well, I, also, I always fancied Joshua with Wilder because originally he keeps his shape and he punches like this, where Wilder throws. So there's a gap there, it's a risk. But you can go right down the middle. If you're moving back against Wilder with those long reach, you're on the end of that long shot, I can't see you recover. And by the way, once Wilder hits you with one, you know the others are coming. Everything's coming. Everything's coming. 
on that very quickly, Wilder Parker, we kind of, I mean, I sort of predicted AJ could fight a Wallin type, right? I mean, those were the opponents lined up. It was Otto Wallin, it was Hergovic, it was Cabello. He's going to fight one of those. I did not see Wilder Parker come from anywhere. No. Like, where did this fight just come from? Mm. Because Wilder, because Parker had a really good, good performance yeah. in Saudi recently. It was good, but I didn't think it was jump to Wilder good. I thought it was maybe go to a Bacoli good. That kind of level. I mean, he's, yeah. he's gone straight there with the biggest puncher in the division. Yeah, it's a hard ask. It really is. There's a financial incentive there. That helps. And also, uh, yeah, and also, <laughs> and also <laughs> but like all fighters, you know, we all think you're going to win, you know, and you always think it's a dream of sport. And he's a former world champion. He wants to be there again. And it's a matter of fact he's only 31. Yeah, he's been it, around it's for a long incredible. time. He's incredible. 31 years yeah, old, same age as me. But like, <laughs> no, but it is, it's, it's a dream of sport. You have, if, if you didn't dream you would, uh, beyond your real, your capabilities, you'd never get there. Mm -hmm. So he thinks, he's fed with the men, he's thinking, if I beat Wilder now, that's it. I'm in the big mix. I'm boxing for the world title. Usyk, I get the Usyk fight. I get, I get Fury, you know, my, my, my camp mate, but I get, you know, I get those big yeah. fights. Joshua will want to fight me because I'm, I'm a big many fight all of a sudden. So you always go into a fight thinking, but no, I'm good enough on my day. I can beat you. But I can't see it. It's a big, it's a big hand ass. Indeed. It's not bad breaking news, is it? I mean, there's breaking news and there's breaking news. Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder will fight in Saudi Arabia, December 23rd. We'll all be there for it as well. Great undercard as well. That's to be announced soon as well. Not a bad Christmas present for all boxing fans. December 23rd is going to be a Christmas cracker. Well, this is what we've had for you already, and it's been explosive. I think that's the best word for it. Our first fight was Giorgio Vizioli destroyed Lee Sibley with a lovely left hand and the left hands follow John Cooney landed a tremendous shot on the chin of Liam Gaynor. Liam Gaynor got up credit to him but the referee jumped in as Cooney went on his attack and up next a fantastic fight for the Celtic light heavyweight title Emmett Brennan versus Jamie Morrissey and then world title well, well, former world title challenger, Zelfa Barrett, well ranked in the, the governing body, Zelfa Barrett versus Koston Iron, the, the very tough Romanian based in Spain. And I mean, we, we, we love talking boxing, but I tell you what, we love talking Sonny and Bam Rodriguez. What a fight that is, Barry. And you're going over there, you jabby uh, side. I'm so lucky. I'm so happy that I can wind you up about it. It's, 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 this is, it's my fight of the, of the year for me. And I, I've been looking forward to it for ages. I've been, obviously, I've been championing Sonny since he, before he beat Ryan Farag. And I remember I did the commentary on the, on the Farag fight and I said, this kid will be a world champion. I just knew it, you could just see the ability he had. But then the first time I saw Bam Rodriguez, I fell in love. He's absolutely brilliant. He's so direct with his approach, the way he, the way he spins around the target, but also for a young man, he doesn't rush his work, so he gets all lots of purchase on every punch. Stylistically, it's such a difficult match for both. It's so intriguing who can who can force their their ethos of how to fight on each other. Uh, it's very hard to pick a winner. It really is. It really like to go against either one. We did a little preview show, and I know I, I had to go on on and pick out who I thought's going, who I think's going to win. Not who I want to win, but who I think's going to win. <laughs> that, that, is that a thing of me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. No, but, it, but either way, it's going to be an absolute, a beautiful fight to watch. A beautiful fight to watch. People think it's going to be a, you know, a chess match. I don't think it's going to be a chess match. People, people undersell how tough Sonny Edwards is. And Bam's going to make him show it. And he will, and, and Sonny will turn up. Sonny got beautiful skills, can make you stand, can spin you around on, on a six pin, stand you on your head if, he, if, he, if he's able to, but he can tough it out as well. And he's going to have to. And that's the beauty of this fight. What do you think, Shannon? What's a fight, firstly? No, for real, I, I did think it was going to be a chess match to begin with, but after watching, I like Bam and I like Sonny, and I think Sonny is going to take the win. But Sonny creates too much space off his angles and his movement, whereas I feel like Bam, he likes to stay close and then create an angle. But when Bam creates the angle, I think Sonny's going to be gone, take a second phase, and it will go like that as the rounds go on. See, you're, you're totally right. I, I believe that. But I think how Sonny creates the space, Bam's going to take a different approach. He won't be square in front of him. Bam's going to go. His Bam will faint to the left, spin round to the right, and Sonny then, what, he, the, uh, what the movement he makes, he sort of slightly squares himself up, Sonny, to give himself an option of either direction. And that, I don't think, is going to work against Bam. So I think he's going to have to adapt on the fly. 
Uh, that, that's what I mean. Some of the things that they do the best might not work for the, either fighter. If, the, if this goes points, who do you favour then? If it's, a, if it's a decision, do you think that the boxing on the outside no. will be enough, or do you think uh, it's that front foot pressure may I, suit I, them? It shouldn't be that, like especially in, in the world now, which is a much smaller place. Like, but it's still, I think where it's going to be in Phoenix will favour the aggressive fighter. Yep. If, it, if the, aggress the aggression has to be effective, of course. So if he's not effective, he's going to get pinged away. Sonny's got to make, there's a little space, Sonny's got to make the punches tell before Bam gets close enough to make his punches tell. What a fight, what a fight, and what a fight we've got coming up now, the Celtic light heavyweight title. The fighters are ready, and so is our MC, David Damanzi. Three Arena, Dublin, Ireland. We are set to go with a special light heavyweight title attraction. Now entering the arena, please welcome the undefeated Celtic light heavyweight champion from Limerick, Jamie Morrissey. And here is the Celtic light heavyweight champion, Limerick's very own. Jamie Morrissey. Five fights, four wins, and one draw. The draw come against fellow Irishman Kevin Cronin. It was, in fact, a rematch with Jamie Morrissey winning their first encounter. The second, a close fought draw for the Irish light heavyweight title. He's been buzzing all week. I actually see an interview with him about a month ago when this fight was announced. and. He says it's an absolute dream come true to, to be on this card, to be on the undercard of a Katie Taylor fight, a defining fight for Katie Taylor. This is a step up for Morrissey. He knows that, but he believes in himself. Does have that edge in professional experience. That Irish title fight in the bag. It was contested over 10 rounds. Was a draw. Remember, this is Brennan's second fight, only his second pro fight, his first eight rounder. Here he is, the champion, the Celtic light heavyweight champion, Jamie Morrissey. And now entering the arena, please welcome the undefeated Dubliner. He is the challenge. Here is the local favourite, former amateur star Emmett Brennan. Stone face. And he lives just a stone's throw away from this arena. Hugely popular, follows the Dublin Gaelic football scene. He supports them and you can hear him in the crowd, they support him. They've come out in their numbers. If the first two fights are anything to go by, do not blink. The light heavyweight Celtic title on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Three Arena here in Dublin, Ireland, live on the zone, we're set to go with a special light heavyweight title attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, C4 Energy Drink, Forged Irish Stout, and Everlast. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside, all from Ireland. Colin Byrne, David Irving, and Emil T. To the sound of the belt, your third man in the ring from Ireland, referee Paul McCullough. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled for the Celtic Light Heavyweight Championship. 
Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he is the defending champion. He wears green with white and gold stars. He scaled 12 stone, one pound, seven ounces. He is undefeated in his campaign as a professional with a record of five victories, no defeats, one draw, with one win coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Limerick, Jamie Morrissey. Morrissey. And his opponent across the ring tonight, he is the challenger. He fights out of the blue corner. He wears the blue trunks with the light blue trim. He scaled 12 stone, two pounds, three ounces. His young professional record thus far perfect. One fight, one victory. Fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, Emmett Brennan. Brennan. Okay, gentlemen, we've both got the instructions in the change rooms. Obey my command at all times. Touch gloves, God bless. Well, here we go. The third fight of the evening. This one for the Celtic light heavyweight title. The champion in the red corner, Jamie Bravo. Morrissey. This could be entertaining, Barry. It is a real gutsy move here for his second fight here, Brennan. Boxing with Ireland defeated in six, and look how tall he is as well, Morrissey. He can get that jab in the play. I'll cause some problems here for Brennan. Yeah, I've seen plenty of Morrissey. He's tall, as you can see, very tall. I mean, he was actually the, the Celtic super middleweight champion. You see the size of him, and now he's the, the Celtic light heavyweight champion. He's tall, he's rangy, lots of self-belief. But he's in with a former Tokyo Olympian, Emmett Brennan. Lots of good pedigree, landing three good shots there, follows it up with a jab, Brennan. He's, he's dreamt of this moment as Morrissey, but so is Brennan. I would say, lives a stone's throw away from here, Barry, and he's charged up. Yeah, no, Brennan's doing the right thing. And, sorry, Morrissey's doing the right thing. He's put, you know, throwing the jab, keeping it nice and long. Just his punches come back a little bit low and a little bit slow. And that just allowed Brennan in a couple of times there, Shannon. Just a, just a gap there to throw the combinations. Yeah, I thought um, Morrissey's throwing that jab out, but his head is still on the line. It would be nice if he could just take his head off the line a little bit to then land that jab. And that backhand's got, uh, coming through, but he's just falling over the, the front foot just a little bit. Yeah, good right hand there, wasn't it, from, from Morrissey? Yeah, working behind the jab nicely. He's tall, he's upright. So that's a perfect, lovely left hook. He took it well, though, Morrissey, but that was a beautiful shot from Brennan. Nice, long left hook. Can he build on that? Can Morrissey take confidence from that? The black fact that he's taken a very heavy shot. Yeah, just dipped the legs, then he dipped the legs there. Stood that front foot forward there, Brennan, and jumped up with that lovely left hook. She's got to keep that right hand up there, Morrissey. I like how Brennan, he's taking his time. He's coming off the line with his head. And he'll look for, for the, uh, the opening, and then he'll um, take, take that opening. Yeah, haven't seen Morrissey in the past. Likes to move against Kevin Cronin, where he beat him first off and drew for the Irish title over 10 rounds. He moves an awful lot throughout that fight, using his advantages. And Brennan said this week that it was down to him to get close. I think he was hoping that Morris Lee would do this. Look to hold the centre of the ring. So Brennan wouldn't have to go looking for him, but it started nicely. Good positive approach from both men. Yeah, it is, yeah. And, and again, the jab's working well here for Morris. He's just, again, bringing it back too low, too slow. And that's every now and again, just allowing Brennan there to slide in the side. But when he keeps him long, he's causing Brennan some problems here. Good opening round from both. Morrissey using the jab really, really well, but the left hook from Brennan. A bit hurtful shot and a good right hand there. He dropped the left to the body as well. This is good pressure on the fast foot. Again, a good right hand there from Brennan. They're just going to panic here on Morrissey. Oh, just missing with a big overhand right. Step back, step back. Oh, Brick. Finished the round really, really well, Brennan. It was a good start from Morrissey. Your Wi Fi's going off. Yeah! EE Wi Fi controls lift the Wi Fi on your kids' devices, helping them to switch off and drift off. 
This is new EE. Stood up a little bit taller than he was originally and he had a good round there in the end, I thought, there for Brennan. I like that Brennan is not worried about the, the size difference. He's using his legs, dipping down, coming in with the hands high and then taking the counters over the top. And what a fight that is. Next Saturday, we're back in Ireland, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Michael Condon versus Jordan Gill. Do not miss that one live on the zone next Saturday. Back to this one. Emmett Brennan versus Jamie Morrissey. Celtic light heavyweight title. Great opening round. Round of two halves, like I say, he started well as he is in this round. Morrissey behind the jab, but Emmett Brennan was getting close. He was finding that left hook. But there's a simple formula here for Morrissey, isn't there? Keep the jab long. It goes out. You know, there's two parts to a jab: the, you know, the extension and the retraction. So you've got to come back as fast as it goes out. And when he throws the right hand, you've got to turn from the hips. Don't lean over your front foot. Turn from the core. Make it keep it nice and long. Force Brennan to, to make a mistake to punch from too far out. Then you can start throwing the shorter shot. I have to say, Brennan, Tokyo Olympian, qualified for the South European qualifiers. Lovely jab from the former Olympian. What makes his qualification to the Olympics even more impressive? He was struggling with a terrible shoulder injury that he took into the qualifiers and even the games itself. An operation to repair the shoulder. He had to take time afterwards because he didn't heal as well as he wanted to. When he made the decision to turn professional, he went out to New York. Oh, he's exchanged right hands, followed by the left hook, Brennan and Morrissey. He said that time in New York was more of a party. He was out there drinking for 12 weeks, but he came back to Ireland. Oh, he lands a big right hand. He took it well, Morrissey. He come back to Ireland, and now oh, there's a cut around the side of the head of Morrissey. From one of those left hooks. I'm not sure that. That might be a clash of heads there. That being on the side of the head. A oh, good one, two there from Morrissey. I just think with Morrissey as well, he could use his feet a little bit better. He needs to be a little bit sharper um, with the output and, and uh, getting back out. Like I say, come back to Ireland, Brennan, not drunk for 18 months, completely dedicated to the sport. Oh, and that's a good right hand. He's taken some shots really well, Morrissey. He's proved he's got a good chin. Luckily, that cut from a shot or a catch ahead. Another left hook from Brennan. He's missing the eye, isn't it? The blood is. He's got no a danger of that going in the eye barrier. No, I don't think so. This a good shot there from Morrissey. Lovely overcut. Just didn't nice. see that. He had that shell like defense there. But, uh, Brennan, but he was looking at the floor. And Morrissey whipped that overcut through the middle. Yeah, could scrap this for the coach. like heavyweight title. The champion on the back foot, Morrissey. Poking out the jab. Bleeding. You've got to make more of this, these, this, these roll, these roll in action here. That's what Brennan's going to take the advantage here. He's going to take the initiative. I think Brennan can capitalise when uh, Morrissey's still coming over on that front foot with the backhand. I think Brennan can capitalise on that a lot more. Yeah, it's a patient approach, stalking his man, looking for that right hand, another right hand as the body sort of dipped of Morrissey. It wasn't from the shot, but another very good round. You can see Morrissey just dabbing to the right side of his head. See if we can see where that blood come from but really really good contest here at the free arena in dublin oh it might be an elbow oh there you go the clash head see the heads there come together A lovely right hand there, though, from Brennan. There's a short, and there's a two. But up until that point, I think from a lot of time, I thought Morrissey was boxing really well with the jab. But again, just once he brings it, now he brings back slow. When Brennan commits to his attacks, he's getting a lot of rewards for it. Just needs him a little bit more. So the second phase got to come quicker than Brennan. Second half. Jamie Morrissey straight to the centre of the ring, as he has done in the previous other two rounds. Brennan looking to faint, poke out the jab. He wants to look for that right hand over the top and that left hook. Lovely double jab, changing the level with his head, not standing tall. Moving a lot to his left. Morrissey, that's allowed 
Brennan to find that right hand. But Brennan's trying to get, just trying to establish his jab here, and that's going to be a worry for Morrissey. He's a shorter guy, trying to get that jab in the face. Seems to have increased the tempo a little bit in this third round, Shannon. Brennan. Yeah, no, he's really good. I really like how Brennan comes in with his hands high because obviously Morrissey is a taller fighter and he's obviously uh, not worried about what's coming back, but the, the arms are long levers. Um, so he's making sure that his defense is on point on the way in and on the way out. Good head movement from Brennan there, coming low, changing the levels. But again, like Chan said, the head movement's good, but the hands are around the, are around the eyes, aren't they? He's got the hands are nice and high when he's, when he's coming forward. Two nice right hands to the body from Brennan. Waiting too long there, Morrissey, let that jab go. He was saying to me, Brennan, that he watched the Kevin Cronin draw, the 10-round fight for the Irish title, and he said, as the fight pushed on, the mouthpiece of... The mouthpiece of Morrissey kept dropping, and it seems to be the case here. He said that he was tiring. And he was using it to, to get a breather. Is that the case here? I'm not sure. It's only the third round. Great corner work. That oh, one. another big right hand for Brennan. He took it well, Morrissey. This is a good attack. He sends. There's a weakness here, Brennan, in Morrissey. And he's landed some big shots. Really fancies this. This is good work yeah, from good, Brennan. Good really good starting left. to turn the screw barry. Good left hook to the front here from Brennan as well. Just got to keep. Keep the pressure on, keep increasing that pace of work here for Morrissey. For, against Morrissey, I should say, for Brennan. Lovely left hook right yeah, he's favouring that shot, the long left hook in the right hand, Brennan. He's got to fire back here, Morrissey. Yeah, he needs to regroup, get behind the jab. We see in that opening round, the jab is useful. Just lost his way a little bit here, Shannon. Yeah, there's a round to going on. Brennan is, um, is wearing him down, and I think Morrissey, he's feeling it, and I feel that gum shield may have been a part of that to, to buy him some time. But look at that, you can see the confidence, can you? Because Brennan knows, knows put that on the line. Good shot from, from Emma Brennan there with crunching right hand left foot. Oh, it's a huge shot. He fancies this. He sees that's another big left hook. This is a really good attack from Emma Brennan. He fancies it. We need a response from Jamie Morrissey. But so far, this is really, really good stuff. An educated approach from Brennan. Oh, three shots. He's trying to fire back, but you got to keep the hands up high here. This is very, very good stuff from Brennan. He's staying in the pocket. He's moving his head. He's firing back every time nice Morrissey uppercut. lets his shots go. Lovely uppercut there from Brennan as well. You're right. Morrissey right now, he just needs to hold. Hold and get some time. Yeah, just falling over the front foot as he threw that right hand. There was a lot of activity in the Morrissey corner there. I'm not sure if they wanted the towel in, but that was a very, very big round for Emmett Brennan Barry. Fantastic run for Brennan. You can see the confidence when that gumshoe went out. You can see the confidence in the face there of Brennan because he, he's seen that as a, as a marker of maybe getting tired in previous fights. So once that happened for him, as soon as, soon as they came, he came back to resume the contest there, the round there, Morrissey, he jumped all over him. But it, it was a quality work. The work, even there when he hit him and he hurt him to headshot, he still him a work in that body, just trying to chop that tree down, trying to get those hands low enough to make space for those bigger shots as you see in here. That right hand, left hook, a good weapon for Brennan. Big statement in that round from Brennan Shannon. Yeah, I think this next round, I don't think we're going to see Brennan take a step back. I think he's going to want to get um, Morrissey out of there, and I think this might be the round to do so. Yeah, really, really good round that Brennan. Brennan. Okay. Morrissey's going to come out here now. It's all about discipline and, 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 and keeping your form in shape. Hands got to be high, and that jab's got to be a solid fast weapon just to put Brennan a little bit into defensive mode. Credit to Morrissey, marches straight out to the centre ring, but like you said, Shannon, I don't think it's going to be long until we see Brennan touch tight to Morrissey, looking for that right hand and the left hook again, but this is what you're calling for, Barry. No, it's not. It's, it's, the, it's the worst thing, actually. That he's pushing the jab out. The jab's got to be like a bullet. He's pushing it out. That's gonna, the Brennan's just going to block and wait and wait and then dip the legs and left hook or right hand. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, it's got, yeah or don't throw it, yeah. I remember my dad used to always say to me, don't bother throwing it, there's not going to be a proper shot, you're better off fainting, don't throw the shot. And another lovely right hand from Emmett Brennan again. Yeah, I feel that Brennan's going to time this, he's going to time it over the top. Nice sort of short jab come left hook from Brennan. There's almost a little 
Change jabs all. But he feels he got more time to, to set the shots up. Yeah. Didn't he? There's no and, panic in him. And he just walk you down, make you force you to make a mistake. Oh, three good shots from Britain again. He's a little reluctant, I was going to say, to throw the jab out, Morrissey. There's fear for that right hand coming over the top, but this is really good educated pressure. Again, he's counter punching on the front foot, Emmett Brennan, and looking very dangerous. But it just shows the, the importance of, of, of realising that punch has two parts here. When it goes out, when it comes back in, he's throwing the jab out, he's pushing it out, but it's, it's, just, you know, it's just not retracting quick enough. And Brennan then is comfortable to slide in, slide in, wait for his opportunity, and then fire either the left hook or the right hand over the top, and never miss him when he throws it. Stalking his man again, moving his head, that's a nice jab from Jamie Morrissey, but it's that right hand over the top doing the damage, he's leaning back, he's taking the sting out of the shot, but that is allowing Brennan to find the range and the target once again there with the straight right hand, missing with that right over the jab, good work from Morrissey though, it's a nice high guard, tucking those elbows in so the uppercut didn't creep through from Morrissey. That's a good little like, screw shot there from Morrissey. But to that point, Brennan was blocking most of that. Yeah, big one too. But some good work holding his feet inside Morrissey. He's making for good entertainment, but probably not good advice or tactics, Shannon. Yeah, Brennan has his hands high as he's coming in, so I'd like to see Morrissey just work the body a little bit more. I don't think there's been enough body work from, uh, from Morrissey. I think Brennan's got the gears a bit here now. He, I think he's, he's found his range, he's found the guy here that he can easily time with the counters, and he's trying to walk him down, but I just think a little change of pace. Good shot there for Morrissey. Yeah, found the target, that right hand over the low lead hand of Brennan. Brennan just taking the feet out of range, just missing with that shot, Morrissey, but this is a game effort from the Limerick man. He's hurt badly. In that previous round, he's come rallying back blood. You can see still there from that clash of heads on the right side of the head of Morrissey. He's waiting too long here, Brennan. A lovely right hand there for him. That's been sort of been the punch of the, of the fight for him, really. Uh, right hand to that left hook, but the right hand really finding a hole. No, that jab's coming re back really slow there from, from Morrissey. Brennan's just finding it easy to slide in. I'd like to see Brennan who now we have a second phase of attack there. He's landing with the shots and he's just trying to walk him down. But there's an injection of pace there that he needs now to increase the pressure. Because what happens when you take your foot off the gas a little bit, it allows Morrissey a chance to throw a good shot build a bit of confidence and that's what's seen him to the end of the round. Second half of the fight we go. What fight has been entertaining stuff from both. Nice jab to start the fifth round from Emma Brennan. For Morrissey, he felt that there, Brennan, as well. He did. Just pouring a little bit of that lead hand, the low lead hand of Brennan. That's allowed that right hand to creep through with a nice straight right to the body, though, for Morrissey. But because there's no second phase of attack, there's no problem. Uh, that's allowing Morrissey to fire back here. It's good work here for Morrissey. He looks big in there, Morrissey. Tall, a natural light heavy. Uh, the two Emmett Brennan would like to have fought for the super middleweight title, but that's tied up, that's taken, and wasn't able to fight for it. So Morrissey said he would put his light heavyweight title on the line against Emmett Brennan. This fight made at 171 and a half. Obviously, the light heavyweight limit 175. So. Do we, do we think that Brennan put a lot into the, to the earlier rounds? Especially that third round, yeah. yeah. Did he empty his tank? Is he feeling the pace? It hasn't been a, a, a crazy pace, but it has been a constant. It's, I think it's been quite a physical battle, hasn't it? It's been a good battle as well, an intriguing battle. This has been a really good response oh, yeah. from Morrissey. Just glances the target with that right hand. He's having a good round here, Morrissey. He is, yeah. Really good round. Very, very brave effort. After that third round, you just didn't think there was going to be much more. It looks as if the towel was close to coming in, but a good right hand from Brennan. I tell you what, though, Shannon makes a really good point there, because Brennan looks tired here. 
Looks a bit neighbor with his work, doesn't it? Yeah, and I feel every shot he's throwing is solid. It, it looks really, really um, hard and sharp. Whereas Morrissey, there's, it's been one sort of pace, but I feel like he's bringing it back now. Yeah. Yeah, just loading up a little bit too much. Brennan with the single shots. Needs to put his shots together. Morrissey working well, better with the jab. That was a nice straight one, two down the pipe, though, from Brennan. Good shot, really, from Brennan. Morrissey made a little bit of a mistake, and he made him pay for it there with three fast punches there. Brennan. Good left hook. He doesn't need to stand here. Morrissey doesn't need this. This plays into Brennan's hand. Needs to get behind the jab, needs to stay tall. Poke that jab out. The right hand's been a good weapon for Morrissey, but here, Though he's working well inside, I must say, Brennan trying to push back a physical battle going on inside the pocket here, but it's making for great action, this Barry. Yeah, it's not stop, isn't it? Really, and, this is, and again, this is the ones that try to drain your engine here, this is drain your tank. I'm not sure who that's going to shoot right now, I'll be honest. Brilliant action here, first fight before the bell, we've been treated already. Joe John Cooney finishing the show in fantastic fashion and this third fight here living up to expectations it really is. Okay, you know, this one we thought Brennan was going to come out all guns blazing, but it was Morrissey who came out nice and sharp. Lovely one, two there, as we see here, punching right through the tag with that right hand. Brennan felt it, took it well, but he felt it, and I just felt from there on there, Morrissey grew in confidence. Brennan was the one all of a sudden, he looked tired. Channel with a real valid point about as he as he maybe worked a bit too hard, as he let, maybe left a little bit in, 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 that, in, that, in that round before, because he looked tired, he looks like he needs a second win. What do you yeah. want to see from both, Shannon? So I was going to say that I think Morrissey, Morrissey now will um, have a bit of confidence from that. But what I want to see is um, a bit more body work from, from Morrissey and to a second phase from, from Brennan. Yep. Will we see that second phase? And again, Morrissey marches out to the centre of the ring. Referee just putting them back to the corners, just allowing Brennan there to get centre ring. Stabbing jab to the body, but nice short. Left uppercut inside from Morrissey. Just carrying his chin a little high there as he throws the jab, Brennan. He just tuck that jab down, uh, chin down as he throws that jab. Oh, nice screw shot there from, from Morrissey. Again, he started this round off pretty well here. Confidence certainly showing from Morrissey. Shannon, he, he's grown into this after that third round. That's good work from Brennan. Yeah, I would still like to see just a, an adjustment from Morrissey and bringing that right hand up when he jabs. It's still quite low and he's been caught a lot with the, with the lead hand hook from Brennan. Brennan bringing that shot back low now and, and it's Morrissey throwing that right hand over the top. He's marked up around the eyes as well here, Brennan. Hands high of Brennan, but better work. Oh, he threw the left up got big work hand though. He took it well again, Morrissey. Big shot from Eric Brennan, but back comes Morrissey. Walks onto a left hook though, a check left hook. I also thought there was a little bit there from Morrissey as well. Yeah, that was brilliant timing. I saw that, it was nice. Brilliant clash of styles here, it really is. Tall Morrissey against the short, stocky, well scored former Olympian Emmett Brennan. Looking for the uppercuts inside Morrissey, tucking up well Brennan. And then now the shift of momentum has changed now. Brennan now looking, well, he's still working well, but he's, he's going to look at the tie there and look at the least of life he has here in his work here, Morrissey. Again, making Brennan miss now and, and then fighting back with the counters. His debut back in July beating Angel Emilion from Emma Brennan over six rounds. A right hand there. Just glancing the target. Again, you see them both sit inside the pocket, left to the body from Brennan. Two left hooks followed by a right uppercut inside from Brennan. Obviously, oh, then go through the gears now. Two good uppercuts again. This is good work. 
back inside yeah. doesn't need to be here for me, Morrissey. Yeah, the left hook, I think the right hook was just missed the tag, but the left hook was a lovely shot. I don't, I don't think Morrissey needs to come down to his level, though. Yeah, I think I he needs to stay up a little bit. Yeah. Both reddened around the face, went in under the left and right eye of Morrissey. The face of Brennan. Brennan's been a really good war. He said a step up for Brennan in the pro ranks. And again, Iggy Morrissey miss. Good finish. Good second half of the round there for Brennan. Brilliant fight, really is. The, the fans here, the local fans, starting to take their seats. Enjoying this one. It's a really hard fight for your second fight. And here is the world rated Zelfa Barrett, former world title challenger, up next against Romanian. Costing Ion. You see how good Ion is against Akif Fears dropping him in the sixth round of their eighth rounder. But Zelfa Barrett, what a display it was against Rakimov in Abu Dhabi. Really wants to push on now and be in more big fights, but he can't take his eye off. Costing Ion, a danger man, a potential banana skin. That's up next on Before the Bell. But back to this one. The Celtic light heavyweight title between champion Jamie Morrissey and former Olympian Emmett Brennan. It's been a fantastic contest as we go into round seven. Yeah, he cannot afford for me, Morrissey, to throw any lazy shots. You pointed out with the jab, Barry. But if he's going to exchange with Brennan, he's but got to make sure they're sharp. Can I run with you? I think it's, in, in the last couple of rounds, I mean, Brennan has been the, the lazy with the longer shots. I think he had a good finish of the round there, Brennan, but before that, he was going to get in Congress. So now the, the shift in momentum. Sold an awful lot of tickets this for this Brennan. Like I say, stones far away as a referee, as a word for both fighters. Stones far away, he lived from the arena or speaking to head of ticketing at Matron Bellagay and she was saying that the first 650 I think went within the first few hours hugely popular as I say follows the Dublin Gaelic football scene and you can see him on the front of the foot here being very selective with the shots as Morrissey works away taking on the guard though of Brennan but it's such a game effort from both but that response after that third round good work there from Morrissey yeah. No, Morris has done well there. He fired, well, he wasn't doing it earlier. He's firing back. As soon as Brennan lands with a few good shots, he's firing back straight away. I think the pocket work is working well for Morrissey um, because he can't get caught with, with the, the shots that can potentially take him down. Yeah. Oh, a big stiff one, too, after a left hook from Brennan inside. I think both need to sharpen up. I think it's the will to win, the desire shown by both that's been so impressive. Leaving it all in the ring, another left hook from Brennan. Yeah, just before Short right uppercut as well, Barry. But just before that, he threw a right uppercut left hook, just before that, that go. shot as well there, Brennan. Really good work. Yeah, I like how Brennan's uppercuts get through the middle from Morrissey. He's to tighten up on his, on his defence. Good work inside again, though, from Morrissey, but back comes Brennan firing shots into the body. A right followed by the left. He just got to keep throwing punches now, Brennan. Oh, and he does, there's a one-two left hook inside, just as you say that, Barry. This is suiting Brennan inside. I think the long shots, that right hand from Morrissey, he's been working a couple of rounds ago, even in the last round. I think now Brennan is comfortable staying inside. This is Morrissey, I must say. I think he's having more success there, but I think it's... That's time, but it's good time to shot there from Brennan. He's always taking a lot of other ones, he's having to be really hard to find the gaps here, Brennan. You see that physical, he's got, he's got to push, push on Morrissey. The size of Morrissey, very evident in there. He really is a big, like I say, from the Celtic to the Uruguay title. See the size of him, how he made that, I do not know. One, six, eight, one, two, oh, a lovely left to the body, followed by a left hook upstairs. Good work from Brennan. Yeah, the variation from Brennan has been fantastic. It's a good round here, Brennan. Morrissey's been fighting back every time, but... Better work to see now the left to get on the uppercut. Going through the gears just as he got a little wired with the uppercuts. He fired through with the left hook. Good round for Brennan. A little bit of a laboured walk back to the corner from Morrissey. You can understand why 
it has been non-stop action. First up on our main broadcast, live on the zone at 7 p.m. Sky Nicholson, the WBC interim world featherweight champion in with Lucy Wildheart. She looks very good. Sky Nicholson, very, very close now, inching closer to a world title shot. All smiles in that dressing room. Really looking forward to that one. Sky Nicholson, desperate to showcase her skills once more. We we'll see Emmett Brennan jump up off his stall. And you can hear the crowd, they've loved this one. The final round, what a cracker, what a war this has been. Oh, good shot there from Brennan, right out of the gate, that right hand. Again, dipping that head to the left, getting the, the space to throw that right hand over the top. It's been a brilliant fight, Shannon, it really has. No, it has. I think they're both feeling the pace now, but they both really want it, as we can see. So I think it's going to get more exciting as the rounds go on. Yeah, can Brennan get close? Can Morrissey keep the distance, or will he choose to sit inside and let his shots go? Oh, another big right hand from Brennan. Took it well, though, Morrissey. He did, as he has the majority yeah, of the shots. It's a big right hand, the left looks have reined in from Brennan. He's taken them well, Morrissey. Proud champion, proud man from Limerick. Loves to fight, and we've seen that in here tonight. Brennan, the local favourite, the former Olympian, the proud Irishman, proud Dubliner, in front of Morrissey, letting his shots go to head and body. Yeah, good solid work there from Ben. And Morrissey just trying to lean on him, those knees, just trying to tie him up and tie him out. It's just the tight, yeah. compact work from Brennan as he lands another right hand inside a good one, too. Starting to put his foot on the gas. This is really good work from Brennan. Yeah, quality work there from Brennan, really accurate with his work. But Morrissey showing a fantastic chin. He has an engine, but he looks tired there, just leaning on Brennan. Lands a nice jab, though. You yeah. see that blood again. Streaming down the right side of Morrissey's face. Just gets caught with a left hook as well. This is good work. Looks tired, Morrissey. Yeah, Leaning on inside. Good work to the body from Brennan. Can he sustain this attack? Oh, big one too. Good work from Brennan. Another right hand. The gun shot comes out. This is a good attack from Brennan. Works the body. Doing the right thing, Morrissey. Holding tight. Grabbing hold of... Brennan, but that was a very, very good attack from Brennan Barry. Yeah, and the come shield out here of Morrissey. I think, to be honest, whatever, whatever the issues are in the past, I think that was generally punched under his mouth. What a, what a real good pocket of work there from Evan Brennan. Accurate, punching through the tag of every shot. And in this stage of a fight, Barry. that's a nightmare for an opponent at this stage of a fight. Well, a minute to go, a minute to survive for Morrissey. He's holding on, he needs to allow space, Brennan. Fantastic final round for Emmett Brennan. He's doing the right thing. Morrissey, but this is good work. A good finish again from Emmett Brennan. He's got an out space. The town comes in. Fantastic fight. Fantastic win for Emmett Brennan. You can see what it means to the local man. What a fight we had there. What a war. Emmett Brennan looks out of the commentary desk. He can be extremely proud of himself, as can Jamie Morrissey. That was epic, Barry. Unbelievable. For, for your second fight to be in an eight-round is ambitious. For your second fight to be in an eight-round, he's a guy who hasn't lost in six, so he's ambitious. To have a war like that in only a second fight, having to ask questions and answer questions. We always talk about ticking boxes, Darren, and we know about durability, chin, resilience, all those things. IQ, all the stuff you need, and he ticked most of those tonight in only a second contest against, I thought, a really good opponent there in Morrissey. Oh, very, very good opponent indeed. Shannon, five win, uh, sorry, five fights, four wins, one draw. Morrissey, a proud champion, but he left it all in the ring. But Emmett Brennan, what a fight that was! Oh, that was absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, the Brennan had it at uh, the beginning, and then the second half, I actually thought Morrissey might have might have taken it there. The, the rest of the way, but Brennan come back on top, found his second win and got the got the job done. And it looked like he was going to the distance. There was a stage there that, that, that Brennan was massively dominant. And then, and then, as Shannon said, they saw that, that, mid, that midway stage to the end, it looked like Emma Brennan needed his second win. 
and Morrison was maybe starting to take over. He looked physically stronger, but in the end, then it was Brennan. Who, like, like all good fighters do, they find that bit of extra bit of energy, a bit of class, accuracy, will to win, whatever you call it. But he had it, and he needed, he needed it as well. Let's be honest. And he found that last round, and he got the stoppage, and that's a fantastic win. And that, in his second fight, that elevates him so far up the ladder. It really does. Yeah, I mean, what a fight that was. Third fight before the bell. Let's hear from our MC to give us the verdict of that fantastic fight. Hey, Dublin, what do you say we give a nice round of applause for both of these fighters, please? Referee Paul McCulloch calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 12 seconds of the eighth and the final round, declaring your winner by TKO. He's still undefeated. And the new Celtic Light Heavyweight Champion, Emmett Brennan. Wow, I mean, this, we've had some brilliant before the bells, but this potentially could be one of the best. The Celtic light heavyweight belt being wrapped around the waist of Emmett Brennan, the new champion. Oh, Barry. Well, to be honest, I've got to be honest, right? when, when I see this fight being made, his first, his, his second fight, it's an eight rounder, it's got a title against an undefeated kid. I thought, what sort of management is that, really? You know, like, who's gonna, that's, a, that's a real ambitious step to take for your fighter. But it was proven the right decision. I think, you know, yeah, that was a hard fight. It was a really hard fight for him. But he learned so much from that. And what he learned in himself is when he needed it most, he could dig deep and get through the fire and find the win in dramatic fashion. Well, I mean, uh, we have to take a breath now. I said you couldn't take a breath after the first two. But letting us all take a breath. Look what it means to the team. He has his first belt. We'll be hoping it's his first of many. And only his second professional fight. Really, really good performance. The team are chuffed. Emmett will be chuffed. Look forward to hearing from the new champion. Local favorite. Literally, literally lived, he was telling me, 500 meters away from the arena. He was desperate to be on one of these big cards in Ireland, the undercard of a legend in Katie Taylor. The dream has come true, but he'll want to push on to bigger things, a proud man. We're going to hear from the new Celtic light heavyweight champion, Emmett Brennan. He is ringside with our reporter, Jamie Ward, and promoter, Eddie Hearn. Let's hear from the champion now. Well, Emmett Brennan, Congratulations, you've just won your first professional title. What a brilliant fight that was in front of your friends, your family here in Dublin. Why can you sit here right now with your head held high? Uh, firstly, I want to dedicate to my, that's my brother's fiance. She's gone through a chemotherapy at the moment, so that was just the one that I had in the ring. Um, incredibly, incredibly tough time for the family over the last few weeks, but yeah, dedicate that to Gillian. It's a great person and she's going to battle through it. But, I've been waiting 18 months for this. I begged this man for a chance 18 months ago. He shrugged me off. I was over in New York, he doesn't know about this. I begged him for a chance. He's standing six feet away from me. At the time, I was drinking terrible. I was suffering with depression, and I missed him. It was my opportunity. 18 months, I kept on growing. And here I am, winning, winning the title in my second fight. I begged him to get on later in the night. He wouldn't agree to it. I'll be back on a match round shot, whether it's in du Dublin or whether it's in New York. Bring me to New York, and I guarantee you I'll sell at least a thousand tickets. I can guarantee you that. It's been shown in three pubs over in New York at the moment. I'm holding this man to it. The second they go back into Madison Square Garden, I want to be there. Emmett, it's a great story, and everyone in this arena and watching the home is very proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself. A word on the fight, because in the build-up, Jamie Morrissey spoke with a lot of conviction, he had a lot of self-belief. But why wasn't that enough tonight? What was the difference between the pair of you in that ring? I said to Eddie and I said to Frank this morning, I told him the first four rounds are going to be competitive. I'm going to blow him away in the last four rounds. I didn't lie. That was a game plan Philip came up with. Walked to perfection. I would have liked him to get him out there very early, but there wasn't a chance I was letting my opportunity slip. 
Look, he's a great opponent. We asked for Jamie Morrissey, didn't we? We asked for him. We knew he was the toughest fighter on the domestic scene. We knew I would have blown the rest of them around, but blown them away. We knew he was going to give us tough rounds. He did. Um, I know I have power, especially in these gloves. So follow this journey. I know the whole of Dublin is going to be behind me. Got 650 tickets on my first show without really getting any promotion or any push from the likes of Matchroom. So with a little bit of push and a little bit of promotion, I'm, I can do well over a thousand tickets. I know this doesn't sound humble, but I'm a likeable character. And I don't take what I'm given. I keep on asking for more, I'm working for more. Promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, it's great to see Emmett with a big smile on his face here, full of confidence once again. 32 now, though. When you talk about business and you talk about moving forward, what's important to him right now? You, you can see he doesn't want to hang around. I mean, you saw that tonight in the ring, but you saw that in his second fight, doing eight rounds against a good opponent as well, you know? And the way that he fights, he's going to fight better over the distance. So I think he should move into eight, ten, ten rounds, you know? And um, he's 32, like you said, he's not a George Vizioli or these young kids. He's going to want to move fast. And I think his style is going to be suited to the longer distance as well. Like he says, he's a pressure fighter. He's got great support from Dublin. It's a massive night for Irish boxing tonight. And, you know, I think he would do well in New York and, you know, speak to the team. And I think he should move quickly because, like I said, I think he's got the experience. He's got the amateur pedigree. He did eight good rounds tonight. And what I liked particularly was he was going for the stoppage. He could have just shut up shop and won the fight on points quite comfortably going into that last round. The corner was saying to him, step on him, step on him, try and force the stoppage. And he's an exciting fighter. And there's going to be big opportunities for him. Emma Brennan, congratulations. This will be a night you'll always remember. And the new. Enjoy tonight. Well done. And the reminder that the NFL Game Pass is now available on the zone. Catch every game live throughout the regular season. And there are some exciting Week 12 matchups. This week included see the Steelers and Bengals, Jaguars versus the Texans, Ravens, Chargers, so much. Our MC David Diamante is ready for our fourth and final contest on before the bell. So let's hand over to him for the introduction. Dublin, Ireland, the action continues with a special super featherweight attraction. Set to make his ring walk, El Sicario, Costin Young. Well, we see it in the, the build up to the Akin Beers fight, and we see it in the build up to this fight. Costin Ion is a handful. He believes in himself, he's confident. We see at the weigh-in, looking in tremendous shape yesterday. No messing about, literally <laughs> jogging to the ring. Colourful outfit, and he's a colourful character. Costing eye on. And now entering the arena, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. Here is the highly ranked sharpshooter from Manchester, Zelfa Barrett, making his way to the ring for the first and second time. And it's a very impressive record. 29 wins and only two defeats. The first defeat came back in February 2018, where he lost a very close fight to tough Scott, Ronnie Clark, but rallied back with nine straight wins. The most impressive of those was a brutal destruction of highly skilled former amateur Irish star, Eric Donovan. Delpha Barrett, very good fighter, but he cannot afford to slip up here with big fights looming from the, for the man from Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen from Dublin, Ireland, live on the zone, the Ashkin to continues with a special super featherweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored tonight by Betfred, Stage Front, C4 Energy Drink, Forged Irish Stout and Everlast. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell, scoring referee Paul Rick O'Roctagon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the Super Featherweight Division. 
Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the white trunks with the pink trim. He scaled nine stones, six pounds, three ounces. His professional record, 10 victories against four defeats. He has two draws with five wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Marbella, Andalusia, España, by way of Bucharest, Romania. Please welcome El Sicario, Costin Young. Young. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the black, gold, and the cheetah. He also scaled at already nine stones, six pounds, three ounces. His professional record, 29 victories against two defeats. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Manchester, England. Here is the former Commonwealth European and IBF Intercontinental Super Featherweight Champion. He's the former world title challenger and the reigning WBA Continental Super Featherweight Champion, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. Barrett. Right, man, it's fucking dressing room, you know what I expect. Keep it clean, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Good night, relive, touch gloves. So here we go, into the final fight on Before the Bell. Eight rounds in the Super Featherweight division. Second judge, round one. In the red corner, Spanish-based Romanian Costin Ion against the highly ranked Zelfa Barrett from Manchester. We've seen Ion in the past, Barry. He's tough, he's aggressive, and he can punch. No, yeah, he can. He can be a real problem, but he's up against a much more seasoned, experienced, and maybe a bigger physical specimen than, than Thias. I would, I would say that in, in, in Zelfa Barrett. No, Zelfa's been, I think he's, he's been boxing better recently. Even though he lost the racquetball, he was like, absolutely outstanding that night. He just ran out of steam, and he had a little bit of an injury. And Rakimov is teeth tough and took over, but he's picked up the European title as well. Quite recently, he's Alpha Barrett, so you know he's on his way to getting close to world honors here. So this should be, should be on paper, a comfortable night's work for him. But as we know, it doesn't quite work out that way, Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, I like this round so far. I really like um, Zelfa's style. I like how he uses the whole ring, and I love his feints before the attacks. He's trying to work out um, what his opponent's going to do, and then and then go from there. Well, it's very much a fast twitch fiber fight, isn't he? Zelfa, you know, everything's twitchy and fast. You know, the, the, the left hand whips out really quick. He, he whips that right hand, and the left took over the top when he when he commits to a combination. I mean, he's not a huge puncher, but he's a snappy puncher. Generates his power from his speed. We see when he dropped Rakimov with that lovely shot. Generated by that fantastic hand speed, but a good attempt, good approach, sorry, from Ion. We see against Akinfeas dropping him in the sixth round of their eight rounder. And sometimes when you're, when you're boxing a shorter fighter, which I haven't had, I, I haven't had much experience of myself, but um, neither does Shannon. <laughs> but You've got to keep that jab, force him to come underneath that left hand. And when they come underneath, that's when, especially for someone like Zelfa, who whips that left right up because they're beautifully, that's what you want. You want to force him underneath your, your left hand. So keep, constantly keep that left hand as a, as a potent weapon. Yeah, using it well. Barrett, sharp double jabs. Ion trying to look for that right hand over the top. Good attack, two shots, dropping to the body afterwards. And it's that variation of the jab. It's not just one solid, it's a flick jab, and then he'll push it out. Yeah, and this, as you said, the variation, he, he went to throw the jab right at the end. He flicked it over, made it into a left hook. He's in tremendous shape. I almost see him at the weigh-in yesterday, putting his head into Zelfa Barrett, he's trying to get into the head. It's a Manchester man who ranks so highly, certainly in two of the governing bodies, I think it's 13 in the IVF. Good right hand though from Ion, right on the 10 second clapper there. It's been a good round here, I've never had that, except for a few little shots here from Ion, it's been a really good dominant round on the jab here. Yeah, respect shown there after the first round, it was a good right hand, some good work to the body from Ion, but the jab nullified most of that movement from Ion in that opening round. 
December 9th, San Francisco, live, worldwide, on the zone. Do not miss that one. What a fight we have in store. Back to this one. Zelfa Barrett versus Christian Ion. Second round in the super featherweight division. He literally, Zelfa is everything that Shannon mentioned before the fight started. He used the ring really well. He fainted, that fainted as he fully threw the jab. So, um, yeah, she's uh, full of herself. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I like how Ion, he's um, cutting off the ring. He's not following Zalfri, he's um, cutting him off. But I would like to see him cut him off and close down the space. Yeah, let's see if Ion can sharpen up those feet. And again, that's a dem demonstration of how to throw a jab sharp. And with the jab like that, and look how fast, he might come back low, but look how fast he comes back. So. So with the jab like that, that just frustrates your opponent to punch when he doesn't, when he out of necessity rather than when he wants to. So you can set up an attack and that gives you better rhythm and timing and strength. But when you have to, when you feel like you have to throw, sometimes you, it's a little bit rushed and you snap at your shots and you shorten your punches and you make mistakes. Nice piercing jab to the body from Ion. That's a shot I think he'll use more in this the team urging him to throw that more often. You can see. Barrett moves, leans back slightly, that target is there, so can he target the body as he does? Again, their eye on more often in this fight. Just like he's able to just step a little bit with the jab. And he's got enough space and timing to get away with it. Just a little just get the hand, the front hand and foot working and use them together. You can see height-wise, eye on Shannon, short stocky, being a shorter stocky fighter yourself, what advantage advantages do you feel a shorter fighter does have than the fight and the taller fighter? Yeah, I feel like we can be quite explosive. I quite like them a little bit taller, to be honest, and I like to use the, the overhand right, but just if you set it up right, using that jab and bringing that right hand over the top. Jump for Barrett, just looking to hold the centre ring a little bit more, piercing that jab to the body. Good variation with that lead hand. Getting the pressure, Barry, from Isle on that front foot, forcing Barrett back. Yeah, but, and he is, but he's not, he's not forcing Barrett to, to panic. So even though, even though he's, he's, walking, he's walking, trying to walk Barrett down, he's not making the work harder than, than he needs to. Yeah, Ion, he does have a winning record, 10 wins, 5 KOs. I don't think that would surprise you. You see the pressure and that physical strength that he has and the four defeats that he has. Never been stopped, never really been hurt. Stocky, aggressive. See the nice high guard taking a couple of shots to the body there, just round that right elbow of his. Even the feet there, he took the hat, half took a left hook, but changing direction all the time. He's got to confuse Ion. Nice right uppercut followed by the left to the body. Good work from Barrett. Good pressure from Ion. Good fight. Yeah, I think really good variation from Zelfa as well. And I think when he's catching those shots, I feel like he's got the speed to return and then get back out if he wants to stay on the outside of the ring. And here is the local heavyweight hero, Thomas Carr. He looked so good last time out against Jay McFarlane. Brilliant display of textbook boxing and brutal shot selection with that left hand. Certainly the variation, beautiful shot. He's in with tough, proud Dan Garba from fighting stock. That promises to be a brilliant heavyweight contest later this evening, live on the zone from 7 p.m. To the third round we go. It's been the sharp movement, the, the jab from Zelfa Barrett. It's been the aggression on the front foot from Ion, stabbing that jab to the body, 
Starts to heat up at the end of that second round. Yeah, Brian's got to make his punches tell more or, or throw more of them if he's going to start you know, putting Barrett in a bit more pressure here. He's, he, again, he's walking on, but he's following, following Barrett around a little bit too much, and that's allowing Barrett just to, the time and space just to set up his shots. Yeah, I think Ioni's trying to get in, but as he gets in and throws a, his first initial punch, his elf is gone, so then he has to reset and start again. Yeah. Yep, stalking his man again. Just needs to get that foot across, as Shannon and Barry both mentioned. Needs to cut the ring off, try and pin Barrett into the corner, but very crafty with his feet, very quick. He'll faint with his feet. They're applauding the left hook from Ion in the corner. Hit the arm or the gloves there, that left hook. What, what, what Barrett's got to do, he's got to go left. He's got to go up and down with the, with the jab. Head, body, then the right hand over the top. Nice oh, that shot, that right uppercut. Very dangerous with the shot. Tuck the elbows in well there, Ion, though. It's a little predictable with his movement coming forward there, Ion. Just allowing Barrett to move, but that was a good left to the body. It was on the, the waistband of Barrett. As soon as Zion makes any sort of movement, Barrett just shells up at the defence. So it doesn't give him any real target to hit. Little jog from Ion, as if to say, yeah, he didn't hurt me there. Again, stalking his man. The football from Barrett's yeah. here. It's both ways, isn't it? Fainting with the feet. Just getting out of trouble there, moving out of that neutral corner. Good head movement from Ion. Just a look for that right hand, I feel. He's done the hard work, Ion. Slip, then throw the shot. I mentioned his IBF ranking 13. He's ranked eight in the WBA, Barrett. So, would you call this sort of fight banana skin? Is it a banana skin, Barrett? No, I don't think it is. I, I think it's a safe enough win for him. I know he, he, the wheels really got to come off. I feel for, for, him to, for, you know, for him to lose, which is potentially can happen in any fight. But I think stylistically and everything about the fight was, was really just a run out for Zalpa Barrett. But as we know, run outs before you know before a potentially a bigger fight. Always have that air of, uh, of, of, of danger, of drama about them. I like Zelfi's jab, as in him, he'll get the work done, and then Ion is coming forward again, he'll pop that jab out just to create that space and buy yeah. some time. Good pressure from Ion at the end of this round. Good pressure, just missing with a big left hook. Good head movement from Barrett. Heating up nicely. Quaker oats feed more than your body. They feed the fire inside. Quaker. Boxing good. But start putting it together like you do it now. Okay, go through the gears slightly. Not too much. Yeah. As the rounds go by, it gets stronger. Okay? Look at the Keep pumping that jab. Look to work off the jab. Where's the right hand? Yeah? I know it, sometimes the defence is not there, your speed will get through. If you faint him and then you look, then you can beat it. Let's go. Here we go, into round four. The super featherweight contest, Alpha Barrett. This is the tough, aggressive, cost an iron. On the front foot, looking for big shots like that left hook, Barry. Well, better for my own head, he's blocked and countered there really quickly. That allowed him a chance just to hit the target almost clean. But again, he, when he jumps forward like that, it could be more than a single shot there. You know, Barra's going to see it from so far out, so he's going to be able to get the hands up. But you've got to, if you get your feet close, you've got to let the hands go in, in, in clusters. That right uppercut, beautiful shot from Barrett. Good variation shown there, good hand speed. He took him well, tucked up well. Ion, a little step back and he's back on the front foot again. No nonsense from Ion. Well, I say, well, Barrett, could he, you know, could he whip his shots in? I think you know, he's a snappy puncher rather than a big puncher. So if you see it coming, I think there's not enough weight in the shots. You can brace and take it. It's because he throws you with a whip. Sometimes the shots, you don't see them. That's, then that's when he gets them. Yeah, and I was going to say that Ion needs to start making some adjustments to, to get some um, 
to, for the punches to land, but I feel like Zelfa is, he's got an answer for anything that's coming his way. Neglecting that jab to the body, maybe, Ion? Single shots, I think, that's the issue. He's, he's throwing one shot to get close and, and, and expecting Bannon off the move. Yeah, I think it's come low and then bring it high. This was a big right up cut there, Barrett. Really throws it well, and that is the shot for Ion, who is shorter than Barrett. Really, but that was better though. An in injection of pace in the feet there from, from Ion, so he just did a little sharp little movement, little feints, very closer to the target. There's a good right hand there inside Barrett, really willing him on. John O'Carroll in that corner, along with the rest of the guys. You can hear him in that red corner of Ion, and he's responding well. He's trying to get close to Barrett, but the speed of foot. The man from Manchester, Barrett, very impressive. So we're really busy with the jab here now, Barrett. He's comfortable, but along and I had a little bit of success here. We're filling with confidence. We know momentum can swing quite easily in a fight. Just keep him in check. Good, good little pocket of work here from my own. Yeah, it was a nice long left hook and a right hand, but it was the left of the body. Look. The most eye catching of the shots. He took it well. Barrett moves back round, tries to get closer to that centre of the ring. Looking to screw that left hand through the guard of Ion. Barrett. Oh, he nods a nice left yeah. hook, Ion. Another reminder that he's still here, still fancies it. <laughs> Well, you don't often see this man at a boxing match, and I'm pretty sure I might have heard him. He might be in the room next to me in the hotel, but it might have been you, because I know you got a voice of an angel. Barry, the great, the talented Ed Sheeran is here this evening. Rubbing shoulders with a rich and famous Barry, who would have thought? From, from Ely, well, is it Ely, Wales, Cardiff? Ely, Cardiff, Wales, you, in that, you, never, in that you, order. you never would have dreamt it, Barry, would you? Well, I, I, I think it's different. Because you're from London, you think, you know, you think we're all living in, in little sheds, you know what I mean? And I was living in a shed, but not all of us were living like that. Well, we'd be seeing Ed Sheeran at ringside. I used to walk past Sheeran and give him a sandwich when he was busking. But did you walk outside Wembley Stadium? I never really, but no. I, I could have. It just shows you the magnitude of the fight, the main event that we have for you this evening. All the marbled super lightweight Chantel Camera versus Katie Taylor, the rematch. Back to this one, round five, second half of the fight. Top of Barrett, Costa Nyon. Barrett starting to creep forward a little bit. Certainly at the start of this fifth round. Well, I am trying to walk him onto something here, but I think Barrett is too clever for that. He'll just keep popping that jab out. Yeah, I see I honestly just uh, lowered that front hand a little bit. And that's the shot for me. The jab to the body from Iron, just neglecting it a little bit. He has success every time he throws it and everything follows that shot, but a bit more intent now on the front foot from Barrett. Yeah, I think Barrett's going to try to start putting his punches together a little bit more on here. He's boxing fine. Yeah, I think he can start to go up the gears. Yeah, and he should, shouldn't he, as well? Not just he can, I think he should as well. Yeah, he's got the speed and strength to... to I think that will um, overwhelm Ion because he's coming forward. You, you look at this and you know Zelfa Barrett is levels above, but do you feel he felt it would have been a tougher night as this, Barrett? It's not physically tough, but he's not having things his own way. He's not able to... Hurt Iron at all, Barry. No, well, it's good, good little word there from him. No, I, well, I, I don't think he would have worried too much about that, but I think, you know, I think you, know, you want to look quite impressive and want, want close to show you know, whether he gets a stoppage or not with some good work. And you, you can't see the stoppage coming here unless you know, he lands a long left hook or something like that. And, and, I am unravels, but I don't really see that happening. But you can throw more shots, you can look more impressive, more feints, as Shannon was mentioned earlier, more feints, and then rattle the combinations off it. Show your class in that way. Yeah, he really is a joy to watch Barrett when he lets his shots go. In threes and fours and five, blistering combinations to head, body, the uppercuts. I say a joy to watch, you can see why he's highly ranked in those governing bodies. Let's not forget, he's, he's in the shot window here, Barrett, for a big, big fight here, so... 
That's a good left hook inside from Wild. Again, the corner really rallying on their man. Some good work to the body that followed after from Barrett. So, tasty contest this. And he has the luxury here, Barrett. That he can throw the combination, but he can still keep it quite, di quite from distance. He can still keep it quite long. Doesn't have to take up that front foot too close. Yeah, I like how Zelf is walking forward a little bit now, rather than Ion doing the walking yeah. forward. Yeah, always allowing space behind him to be able to move off. Nice left hook, counter left hook, drop to the body. It was a little low from Barrett. It's the right ID, tapped upstairs with the left hook and dropped to the body. Yeah, referee rightly so, just telling Barrett to keep the shots up. Too many complaints from Ion. Signs we're just starting to see Barrett creep forward and letting his hands go, but the tough crossing iron still there, still looking tough, solid and rugged. Yeah, we've already seen Sky Nicholson in the changing room doing the shadow boxing, but now we're seeing her gloved up and she's up next against Lucy Wildheart for the WBC interim world featherweight. Title, Stein Nicholson, the champion, defending her title. She's on the cuffs of big things, just putting the tape around the gloves. Eddie Lamb, fantastic coach, Bradley Skeet, envisioned there as well. Fantastic fighter, Bradley. Great, great man, great guy to have in your corner, full of knowledge, former British champion. And we'll see Sky Nicholson versus Lucy Wildheart next live on the zone from 7 p.m. About 20 minutes time. Round six. This good battle between Zelfa Barrett and Costa Nyon. Yeah, I think Ion's had a bit of success here and there. Anyway, he's done him some good shots and he might have nicked the wrong, but I just not consistent enough. Yeah, spoke to Barrett in the hotel. Sonny Sparva Jack Bateson for this. He's done a bit with Josh. Warrington before his fight with Lee Wood. Basically, he wants the biggest fights, he was saying. He'd love a world title fight, love to fight Joe Cordina. Anyone really with any substance, but he also said he'd entertain a fight with Edward Vasquez. We see Edward Vasquez against Joe Cordina in Monte Carlo recently. Yeah, man. Good. Sure. Yeah. Measuring stick, I'm not sure, but could he outdo, could he make easier work? over Ed Vasquez than Joe Cordina did. Brilliant fight that was in Monte Carlo, Barry. Yeah, well, I think that's, you know, that's, if you want to try and force a narrative there, then I think that's, that's not a smart, that's a smart idea, you know, just, if I can beat the guy better than you beat him, then questions will be asked about, you know, what happens when we get in the ring. And the no-nonsense approach from my on, just loading a little with those shots. But then this is the set, this is a fight as well, where, you know, you, you know Cordina will watch us and go, well, what would I do with Ion? Maybe he's not the same, he's not having problems here. Barrett, he's not being massively dominant in the last couple of rounds. Does anyone have an easy night against Ion? Yeah, but, yeah, but, but Barrett's a world-class fighter on paper, you know, and, and he is, you know, he's shown that against Rakhlar, so he, he should be dominating this. Yeah, I think Zelfa does that, he does, he does a nice move off, he uh, takes his lead hand out to, to keep the space, but I think then is when he uh, should do his second phase. Yeah. Nice variation with that lead hand. Barrett just screwing that left uppercut through then going round the side of that left glove of Bion with the right hook. And again, same shot. Stabbing the jab to the body, looking for that right uppercut once more, Barrett. It just, show, just shows the importance of a good left hand. I always just, it's a scoring weapon, but I would just always keep you at the safe, in a safe place. With that spacing between you and the fighter then is dominated by that long left hand. You know exactly where you are as well when you're going to throw the punch. And your opponent's got to try and you know, almost guess the distance because you know, he's too far out to throw when it's a shorter fighter. Yeah, Jim's buzzing. You see Lyndon Arthur spending his Saudi money. <laughs> oh, <laughs> coming up. Oh, he's jackpot, he? <laughs> oh, good. I'm so happy for him. He had about 15 shopping bags he did walking around the streets of Dublin. Obviously fighting in that mammoth card on the 23rd of December, a day of reckoning. Tough challenge he has though, but not for the money he's getting though, it's it's worth the worth the risk. Unbelievable.
Again, see good pressure from Ion, but good work on the back foot from Barrett. Good body shot there from Barrett, so it's just underneath the, the right elbow there, Ion. But I feel a little change that Ion could do is fake that hook, uh, fake the hook lead hook because he's catching him every time. Fake it and bring that right hand through the middle. Jake Paul returns against August, Friday, December the 15th. Another one you can catch on the zone. Busy, busy month, December. So much to look forward to. The one that Barry cannot shut up about. Sonny Edward versus Bam Rodriguez the day after the 16th of December. What a fight. I won't even ask you any questions because you won't shut it, up about it's, it. It's my new Christmas day. <laughs> <laughs> December 16th. Do not miss that one. Number one versus number two in the division. Round seven. Two rounds to go in this contest here at the Free Arena in Dublin. John O'Carroll just saying to his charge, cost an eye on you win these next two rounds. You've won the fight. Been a lot of pressure. He's landed some big shots, but have they been frequent enough, Barry? No, I don't I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. But you know, if he, if he wins these two rounds, he makes it a close affair, of course. Then it's only an eight rounder, you know. But I did say I thought, I thought you know, maybe he hasn't got a couple of rounds and then they would make it a, a close fight. Anything you'd want Barrett to be doing more often, Shannon? I think now is is putting the combinations together, letting the hands go, coming off at an angle because he's got good footwork, good feet, um, and then going again. I'd like to see a bit more from him. And on the flip side, Ion. With Ion, I would like to see come low, bring it over the top, um, because I'm a shorter fighter as well. I'm trying to look at it and see what would I do. Um, I would do a lot more feints with the hands as well. There's not a not a lot going on. He launches in with that hook, which catches um, Zelfa every time, but it's on the guard, so it's fake that attack and bring someone else through the middle. You you wouldn't throw you wouldn't throw enough jabs. <laughs> I'm on my next I'm fight, Barry, I'm going to I'm going to throw the yeah, whole round jabs. Yeah, you're doing great, mate. Don't worry about that. Oh, that's nice there from Barrett, lovely work. Just uh, more than that, the injection of pace. Just a, just a different just a different tempo to the work. Another nice right to the body from Barry. It just looks for the shot, but Ion just takes a step back as he does again. Doing the right thing, Ion really doesn't. He just stand there because the, the speed, like we've said, not the biggest punch of Barrett, but that speed does generate a lot of power. Yeah. We see that when he fought Eric Donovan at the fight camp. It was a brutal shot. And the whip in the shot, if you don't see it, that's the end of you. If you see it, look at the got the weight in the shot. If you see it, you can brace yourself and, and absorb it. But if you don't see it, the way he throws it, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah, the solid win back after that. Ninth round stoppage from Rakimov. Big Jason Sanchez back in April. He's on the Joe Cordina Rakimov card. Good work from Ion there. Oh, he walks onto a left hook. That seemed to stun Ion for a second. He walks onto that shot, so marking to the right eye. He certainly felt that, the Romanian. Yeah, again, on the tempo, the shot he didn't see. Just had the hold on, then he got square leg there, didn't he? A little bit oh, and again, long left hook, just missing with the right hand after Barrett. But he picked that shot lovely, Shannon. Yeah, I really like his other variation, and now that he's got um, eye on her, he needs to just keep pressing him, stay on him, and not let him off. Talking about the, the power there being generated by the speed. It was a lovely left hook on the back foot as his touch touched the his back touched the rope and there's another right hand there's blood to the right eye of Ion. This is really good stuff at the end of the seventh round from Zelfa Barrett showing his class, showing us and the public out there why he's rated so high in those governing bodies. Well, what he's shown as well is when he changes the pace of his work, almost more dynamic he is. It's a lovely shot, just, you know, real, just real nice to relax, just you know, sees a gap, blocks and conquers you know, with a lovely left hook. But then when he started pushing forward on Iron then, he, he saw a jab and he started whipping the shots in. There's a different different tempo to the first punch than there was to the second and third shot. And that makes the whole difference, because you can't read your work. You're very hard to, to, to go up against it. You, don't, you can't you know, really block the shots because they're coming at different speeds all the time. 
And that's what he's able to do. Lovely left hook, Shannon Wilson. A little bit of a delayed reaction with the knees dipping from my arm. Yeah, he's got brilliant counters, but now let's see three. Threes and fours after the, uh, when he gets uh, when he blocks a shot. We're into the eighth and final round of this super featherweight contest here at the Free Arena in Dublin. The last fight on before the bell. What a brilliant before the bell. We really have. It has been actually. It's been really good. It's been really, really good. Yeah. Giorgio Pizzioli winning his debut in crushing, destructive fashion. John Cooney doing exactly the same thing, winning his temp contest. Emma Brennan and Jamie Morrissey. I mean, take your hats off to both there. What a war that was. Emma Brennan forcing the stoppage in the eighth round. And this one here to close the show. Zelfa Barrett, the highly rated, ranked super feather from Manchester against the Spanish base. Or the other way around, sorry, Romanian based in Spain, crossed an eye on. He's been tough, he's been rugged, he tried his best to get closer and land some big shots, but the end of that seventh round was classy from Zelfa Barrett. That's good there from Barrett, that's it, just trying to walk him down now. As long as he walks behind the punches, then he's, he's always going to be in a safe place and push you back with the shots. Intelligent work there from Zelfa. Stabbing the jab to the head, then body and looking for the right hand over the top. It was good head movement though from Ion just to avoid the shot. Starting to up the pressure in this final round, Barrett, with that front foot, starting to force the pace a bit more. Good jab, good left to the body. Ion struggling for the gap in here, isn't he? Right hand over the top, everyone then up on it. Yeah, they're willing him on. John O'Carroll in that corner, the red corner of Ion. Trying to get their charge going. Just the lack of foot speed has been the issue, and evident again there. He looks to throw the left hook, and Barrett just slides out of range, just half an inch, just enough to avoid the shot. I like that Zelfa's punches are not all the same uh, strength. He'll keep them light and then he'll choose which one he wants uh, uh, to try and um, hurt Ion with. Yeah, been very selective, that uppercut. It's been a good shot, but he just tucked the elbows in again. Nice long left hook, taking on the right glove of Ion. This is good boxing, there's a spring in the step of yeah, Barrett. He's enjoying he, himself in this, this final round. He should have been doing this a few rounds earlier. Lovely work. But he gets rhythm with his work down, he's on the balls of his feet, gets some rhythm and, get, and, and that gives him more of a whip. He's a, he's a real rough house, Ion, and I think this is winding him up slightly. The shot's making the Romanian fall into the ropes. He won't like this, he's desperate to land a big shot. Get his final shot in before he hears the final bell. There's 20 seconds to go on the clock. It's been, been a, a good test, hasn't it, Shannon? Yeah, there's been a lot of respect as well between, between the rounds. Whereas good, strong finish from Zelfa Barrett in the last couple of rounds. We've seen glimpses of that class. A nice workout for Barrett to move forward into those big fights that are looming. Well ranked in the governing bodies, like I say. Ion again proving what a tough customer he is. Just lacks that, that foot speed. Yeah, really, really good fight. It was a good here. work. Just to finish it. And undisputed lightweight king Devin Haney is back on the zone. Make sure you tune in to see him attempt to become a two-weight world champion as he faces super lightweight world title holder Regis Progray on December 9th, live on the zone and the zone pay-per-view. Regis. Coming for you. Coming for you. We will win. You're not real. You're fake. You're fake. You always dream to become a two division champion. You've been bamboozled, bro. You've been bamboozled, bro. Fight it. We'll knock y'all cold. Wakey, wakey. Big fight to look forward to on December 9th. Good fight to finish our uh, Before the Bell segment. Zelfa Barrett versus the Romanian Kostanayon. Good solid eight rounds in the bank for Barrett and he can move on to the big fights that he's after. I think our MC David Diamante is ready. 
the referee is rating for both fighters for the inter that, well, sorry, the verdict of that final fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of action here in Dublin, we go to referee Paul Wirt, Parik Oroctagon scorecard. It reads 78 to 75 for your winner, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. Barrett with his hand raised at the end there. Good workout for the man from Manchester. Got both fighters now. Big fights in that super featherweight division. Couldn't overlook Costa Nyon. He's tough, he's rugged. Selfa Barrett just jogs to where our reporter Jamie Ward is. Alongside promoter Eddie Hearn. Let's hear from the Victor Zelfa Barrett. Zelfa Barrett, congratulations. Professional victory number 30 for you tonight. Overall, why can you be happy with that night's work? Um, it was okay, you know. Uncle P's gonna go through whatever with me, but you know, it was good to get out, thanks to Eddie Match and Dazong. But um, you know, as Eddie says, big fight next year, man. He's a good fighter to, you know, blow the covers off. Costignon has been troublesome for some fighters of late. Like you say, maybe a keep busy fight ahead of next year in some ways, but why was it also important when you look at the bigger picture that you didn't take your eye off the ball tonight? Um, because, you know, I've got eyes watching. I believe, you know, I'm like a banana peel in, in this weight division. Some, I'm a fighter where they didn't need to fight me. That kind of a fighter, so I've got the best promoter in the world. I'll get put in, in positions where they have to fight me. So, you know, I've just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Trust the process. 13th with the IBF. Eighth with the WBA, you've built really solid foundations over the last 18 months or so, fought for a world title. What does 2024 look like in your mind? Whatever um, Uncle Eddie says, man, yo, I said it in the um, interviews, I'm willing to go Timbuktu anywhere, as long as I get the right um, preparation. If it's Nunes for our final eliminator, perfect. You know, as Eddie says, it has to make sense. So if I'm fighting a big dog, hopefully it's just something at the end of it, you know, so I'll fight anybody. I told Frank to me if I was saying to Eddie now, like, with the right preparation, I shouldn't rack him off. I'll fight anyone. Just give me the right preparation, the right carrot at the end of the fight, I'm there. Promoter Eddie Hearn, just a quick one from you. Zelfa never really shying away from a challenge. What must you deliver for this man next year? Yeah, just a big fight, simple as that, you know, and I was pleased with tonight. Good work from the matchmaker and Steve Wood as well, because if you're going to have a tick over, which that was, at least have a good night's work and some proper work in there. And he was a handful, you know, probably gave away a couple of rounds without even thinking about it because he was just getting into his flow. So a good way to get rid of the cobwebs, a good way to go and have a nice little break over Christmas, get straight back to the gym. And for us, we must deliver him a big fight in early 2024. Bring on 2024. Congratulations, Amazing. Elfa. Well done. Elfa. <laughs> Well, what a before the bell that was. Four brilliant fights we brought you. And you can see there, above the ring, the graphic of our main event tonight. Chantel Camera versus Katie Taylor, the rematch. From myself, Barry Jones, Shannon Ryan, it's been a pleasure having you. Make sure you tune in 7 p.m. live on The Zone for our main show. It's very, very important to run it back just because I believe I'm going to win the fight. I believe I can win the fight. I want to continue to defy the odds and I want to continue to make history. Sport can be very, very cruel at times. You have a winner and a loser. One person celebrating to their team or a heartbroken and disappointment and disappointed in the dressing room afterwards. So it is very, very important to be gracious in both scenarios. But yeah, that's why uh, it's such a it's so beautiful as well. At the same time, just wanted the the exact same conditions, the same opponents, uh, the same weight, the same venue. I believe I can win this fight, and it was a very very disappointing night last the last time, and I want to turn that disappointment into a great victory.